roads are actually fairly dry right now. They got taken well care of yesterday. Uh, we do have restrictions going into Big and Little Cottonwood Canyons this morning, uh, but at least as far as how things are starting off on a Monday, we're doing okay between Ogden and Provo on I-15 and the city streets. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Educators at Highland High School have created the district's first STEP team. It began with Miss Tiffany Rasmussen, a lifelong Utah, 10-year veteran teacher and black student union advisor who listened. Black students come to me and say, look, we're not making the cheer team, we're not making the dance team. We really feel like we don't have a voice here and we're not seen. With the full support of BSU co-chair Deirdre Strait, whose own kids once roamed those halls, and coaches Christine Slade and Chris McKinley, who donate their own time, brought Step back to Utah. Last seen in the 90s in the Ogden district. It's just been a real privilege to be a part of seeing these kids participate and grow and gain confidence and explore their heritage and explore different cultures as well. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. A couple from Highland hopes to prove their skills in a renovation reality show. KSL TV's Michael Commit joins me live with more. Michael? Tim, Jeremy and Jessica Rock found themselves on Cabin Wars, Flip It to Win It, just weeks before their first wedding anniversary. They were given a month and 20 grand to flip a tiny cabin down in New Orleans. Thing is, the Rocks were the youngest competitors and neither of them were contractors, so the odds weren't really with them. But they made things work out. They overhauled the entire cabin, working up to 15 hours on some days with help from friends and even competitors. Now they have a shot at the season prize of $40,000. But we'll get to know what happens when the show streams later on in April. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. Sounds like we had the first blockbuster weekend of the year at the movie theaters. Dune Part 2 devoured $81 million at the box office, scoring the highest weekend gross since Taylor Swift's concert film premiered in October. This is a form of power that our world has not yet seen. Close to half of the tickets sold were for premium large format screens like IMAX, which helped propel the sci-fi epic to the high end of expectations and offering a shot in the arm to struggling movie theaters. You are not prepared for what is to come. After leaving the box office for two weeks, Bob Marley, One Love, grossed $7.4 million for a distant second. I think I'm supposed to help. The faith-based drama Ordinary Angels brought in $3.8 million for third place, while Sony's Madam Web crawled into fourth place with a measly $3.2 million. I'm Kevin Carr. Traction devices require, uh, required, that is, if you're headed up little or big Cottonwood Canyons this morning. The valley driving's pretty good, but uh, we do have some snow falling in the southern part of the Wasatch Front. We'll check it all with traffic and weather together next. Bigger stories demand more accountability, more experience, more trust. If it's like an election day or we're expecting some bad weather, KSL presents the story. I'm biased. It's a good local source. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. <coughs> oh, this cold. Honey. <laughs> Honey. Honey, you need DayQuil Severe Honey. DayQuil Severe Honey gives you powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a honey-licious taste. Because life doesn't stop for a cold. Okay, I'm ready to go. <coughs> now I'm getting a cold. Honey. Try DayQuil Severe Honey for powerful cold and flu relief. DayQuil Severe with honey flavor. The daytime coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever, honey-licious, power through your day, medicine. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Sometimes I struggle to get to sleep. My body stopped for the day, but my mind is still running. So I take ZQuil. ZQuil, the world's number one sleep aid brand, has a range of non habit forming products to fit you and your family's needs. Invest in a great night's sleep for the best you tomorrow. I'm awake and ready to take on anything. Better days start with ZQuil nights. Explore our products at ZQuil.com. Use as directed, keep out of reach of children. We start the morning uh, keeping an eye on two separate shootings over the weekend. Two people dead, one person in the hospital this morning in critical condition. We have team coverage coming up for you, and uh, we continue to search for the latest details. It's 5.09, time for a look at uh, traffic and weather together. It's brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay App. Save up to 20 cents a gallon, and he's back in the traffic center. And we're starting off with traffic doing okay, at least in the Salt Lake Valley this morning, with no extra stormy conditions. We've had a good speeds going into Salt Lake on I-15 and coming out of Tooele on I-80, but big and little Cottonwood Canyons, if you're going to use those this morning, 
Uh, chains or four-wheel drive restrictions are in effect. Heather? No problems right now through Weber and Davis County. Roads are mostly dry. Some of them may still have a little bit of moisture on them, which might be frozen because it's cold enough to do that. So you still want to use caution on the exit ramps, also on bridges, overpasses, things like that. But right now, the few cars that are out and about are at freeway speeds. Eric? From Santa Quinn to Point of the Mountain, I-15 looks good in Utah County. You don't have any delays uh, going out through Provo Canyon, also in good shape. Uh, Spanish Fork Canyon, if if you go out to the Soldier Summit area, uh, you do have snow falling from there uh, down into the Price area just before Price. Uh, then uh, things get cleared up if you continue southbound. I'm Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. More than 10 below the normal today. We'll go for 38 for a high chance for snow showers. Overnight, 26 clearing skies. Tomorrow, 46 with partly cloudy skies. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. We're below freezing to start the morning. It is uh, 28 degrees and cloudy out there to start the day. Ann Flaherty is going to join us. She is a senior national reporter for ABC News at the Pentagon. I don't know if you saw some of the video over the weekend of uh, the uh, supplies, food and, and medical supplies that have been dropped into Gaza over the weekend. The Defense Department saying that uh, this work is going to continue as they continue to work behind the scenes on a ceasefire deal going to get the latest on that effort coming up in just a few minutes so stay with me at 102.7 fm and 1160 am remember to look for a streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for ksl news radio we're utah's news traffic and weather station kids no running please auntie uh-oh watching someone's kids is stressful but watching their pills isn't. I can tell this change has been really hard on you. Would it be okay if I held onto those pills for a little while, just until things settle down? Help prevent suicide. If someone you know is struggling, ask if you can temporarily take any dangerous medications off their hands. Learn more at liveonutah.org. Two years ago, Americans watched in horror as a crisis unfolded at the Kabul airport. There's desperation and anguish. More than 80,000 Afghans have since arrived in America, but this story is still unfolding. I'm Andrea Smartin. In my new podcast, Stranger Becomes Neighbor, we'll find out what happens to these new arrivals in our communities. Who would help our newest neighbors? Follow us at kslpodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you listen. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. If you talk and they will hear you. We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy, so we show them how. And we tell them with honest conversations that let them know what we expect. Not just one time, but every chance we get. That's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. Kids not only need to know the dangers and how to avoid them, they need to hear it often from you. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be taken without a prescription and never shared with friends or family. It's dangerous and illegal. So talk with your kids and guide them through the challenges of growing up safe and healthy. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. So talk, they hear you. You can do it if you try. Good morning, KSL News Time, 5.15. The three things you need to know this hour. First, two people are dead following a workplace shooting in Salt Lake City, and police are still trying to figure out what led up to it all. 
I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, green lights are lasting a little longer in parts of northern Utah County. UDOT is adjusting those lights to help ease traffic congestion. Speaking of that, let's see how the roads are doing with uh, traffic and weather together. Well, there isn't any congestion yet. That's good news. Road conditions are good, at least uh, between Ogden, Salt Lake, and Provo right now. And uh, maybe your neighborhood street may not be perfect, but uh, all your major arteries uh, are looking pretty decent this morning. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Cold with snow showers today, high of only 38. I'm Matt Johnson. It is a little nippy out there. 28 degrees to start the morning with a look at our top national stories. From ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. The Supreme Court is set to release at least one decision today, and it's widely expected to be the one involving Colorado's attempt to kick Donald Trump off the ballot. ABC legal analyst Royal Oaks with more on why the ruling could come down this morning. The judicial system can sometimes be maddeningly slow, like you're tap dancing in molasses. But here, the high court is probably eager to announce its ruling on the insurrection issue, so voters making decisions in Super Tuesday primaries and other contests will know the outcome of the Colorado legal fight. Tomorrow is Super Tuesday. Nikki Haley did win her first contest over the weekend in the District of Columbia. Vice President Kamala Harris in Selma, Alabama, commemorating the bloody Sunday attack on the Raymond Pettus Bridge, calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. People in Gaza are starving. The conditions are inhumane. And our common humanity compels us to act. The U.S. started dropping aid packages in Gaza over the weekend, Israel being urged to continue ceasefire negotiations. A major blizzard in Northern California over the weekend. California Highway Patrol Sergeant Eric Strecker going car to car, checking if drivers of trucks and cars were okay after getting stuck in a familiar section of road. This is the Sierra Nevada. This is Donner Pass. The whole story about the Donner Party. There's a reason that that happened up here. Unlike the Donner Pass incident, no one was hurt after becoming stranded. In SpaceX rocket and Kennedy Space Center overnight. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition, engines full power, and liftoff of NASA Crew 8. Go Falcon, go SpaceX, and go NASA. It's carrying three astronauts and one cosmonaut to the International Space Station. Caitlin Clark did it over the weekend. She now holds the NCAA basketball scoring record. You're listening to ABC News. All right, let's go in depth here. The U.S. dropped its first round of assistance in Gaza this weekend. The Department of Defense says they'll continue as they work on a hostage ceasefire deal. ABC News senior national reporter Ann Flaherty joins me live. And uh, just the visuals of that with those huge packages falling onto the beach was stunning. Yeah, it was about 38,000 of these MREs. That's what, you know, the, the U.S. troops use, meal ready to eat is, is what they're called. Uh, dropped over the coastline of Gaza, of course, 38,000 meals for 2 million people, um, many of whom are starving. The World Health Organization reporting more children succumbing to starvation in the area. So, you know, it, it's something that hadn't been done before, but I think it's something that hadn't been considered because it's so largely ineffective. What they really want are those ground routes to be opened up uh, and, and to allow the aid trucks through, that's going to be the one that makes the difference. But, of course, President Biden saying he can't wait. He acknowledges the starvation in the area um, and went ahead with those aid, aid drops. What are we to make of the timing of these drops, if anything? Or did it just take this long to get the coordination effort going? You, you know, I think it was just it was just pure frustration on the administration part. As, as I mentioned, it's not large, it's not pretty uh, effective. Um, I think some critics would say, you know, this is not a solution. This is more of a photo op uh, to try to get food into the Gaza region. So it wasn't something they had been working for so many weeks on trying to get the uh, the, the land openings, um, the, the border crossings open, and to get aid through that way. So, you know, this was almost uh, kind of a last resort. I mean, it's very expensive. It's C-130 planes, three C-130 planes. Um, other countries now joining in on the effort because they simply cannot get the aid through. So the administration telling us this morning they're going to do more. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another plane load this morning. Um, they said that there is more to come because the need is just so great. What's the latest this morning as we start a new week on the ceasefire? President Biden had said that uh, it could start as early as today, but it seems to be uh, there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect between our administration and uh, the Netanyahu administration. 
right? I mean, it's, it certainly seems like uh, the Biden administration is putting pressure on them to, to agree to this kind of ceasefire. What we did hear over the weekend from a senior administration official is that Israel has essentially agreed that the onus, they said, that was a direct quote, the onus is now on Hamas. So it's we're in a little bit of a wait and see. Um, I, I know that the administration is very frustrated with what's going on in Gaza. Um, critics of the administration say that doesn't that frustration does not go far enough with the devastation that we're seeing, um, and they need to do more to act, possibly withhold uh, any kind of military aid to Israel. All right, and thank you for your coverage of this and uh, for your time this morning. That's Ann Flaherty, senior uh, national reporter, ABC News at the Pentagon, on our in depth at 15 and 45. 519 Traffic and Weather Together is brought to you this morning by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon, and he's back in the traffic center. And we're doing okay through Salt Lake County this morning. Light traffic so far on Bangor and Mountain View. Not really any wait times through those intersections going up through West Valley yet. I 15 doing okay. Road conditions are good. That's not going to be an issue, although maybe some exits and overpasses might still be a little slick. But for for the most part, they got taken care of pretty well over the weekend. Heather? Things are looking great through Weaver and Davis counties as well. No accidents reported right now on I-15, Legacy Parkway, or US-89, and not a whole lot of traffic yet. Now, some of the roads might still have a little bit of moisture on them, and it's cold enough to freeze, so just use some caution. Eric? I-15 looks just fine in Utah County. Uh, right now, you're looking at a uh, trip from Santa Quin to Point of the Mountain. That's going to run about uh, 30 minutes of drive time. Uh, south of that, uh, we'll keep an eye on Jueb County because it does look like snow is falling down in that area. If you're on I-80 going out to Park City in the Wasatch Bank, everything looks good so far uh, this morning going through the mountains. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 a forecast has the coldest of the next seven today. 38 the high, chance for snow showers. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 46, up to 51 with a chance for rain snow showers on Wednesday. Thursday, 46, mostly cloudy skies. We'll drop it back to 41, partly cloudy on Friday. Weekend looks warmer and drier, upper 40s, low 50s. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now in Salt Lake City, 28 degrees to get our day and our week started here. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Wild weekend for weather. Hopefully uh, in your household and all of your... Uh, you know, trampolines and any furniture you had in the backyard survived. There's some crazy videos out there this morning. And there was, what did they say, 8,000 people, I think, without power. My brother up in uh, just north of Pocatello, somewhere in the Blackfoot area along the Snake River there, was without power from Friday night at 1 a.m. until yesterday afternoon. They had no power. Luckily, uh, they had generators and uh, they have a trailer that's uh, fully equipped with propane and they had a wood stove in one of their outbuildings, so they kept everybody warm. But it was a, a crazy weekend with more uh, snow, it looks like, coming. And coming up a little later in the morning, uh, we'll be uh, taking a look at uh, Supreme Court rulings. Our understanding is it's somewhere around 10 o'clock Eastern, so 8 o'clock our time. There may be some rulings that are handed down, and it's widely thought that one of those uh, decisions may be in that Colorado Supreme Court uh, case where they uh, want to remove Donald Trump from the 2024 GOP presidential ballot, uh, primary ballot. We're going to keep an eye on that story for you this morning and have anything that comes from the Supreme Court reported later. M. Wynn from ABC will join me. KSL News Time 523. There are so many things that set Euromax cabinets apart from any other cabinet provider. The details can be a bit overwhelming, but let me give you a small sample. Each of their boxes are made from laminate with high-strength press wood core. They band all four edges of each piece using a waterproof and heat-resistant PUR glue that's the best in the industry. Their process virtually eliminates water damage, chipping, and greatly extends the life of your investment. Their LED lights are inset flush, so they look amazing wherever you put them. Whether it's inside glass cabinets, under the wall cabinets, or in the toe kicks, nothing adds a more luxurious feeling than lighting done correctly. When it comes to the face of your cabinets, the sky's the limit. They have access to all the cutting-edge products in the market. Simply put, the finest cabinet to be built and installed in the state of Utah. Go see their showroom in Pleasant Grove or start shopping their product at EuromaxFurniture.com. That's EuromaxFurniture.com. Euromax, built for you. In business, service is everything. 
Cintas delivers what you need to better serve your customers. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, tested and inspected fire protection systems, first aid and safety supplies, on-site AED training, or mops and restroom products stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together. So visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. To thank you for 40 unforgettable years, Dell Technologies is celebrating with anniversary savings on their most popular tech. For a limited time only, save on select next-gen PCs like the XPS 13 Plus, powered by Intel Core processors and more. Plus, curate your dream setup with great deals on select monitors, mice, and more must-have electronics and accessories. When you shop online at dell.com slash deals, you'll have access to leading-edge technology and free shipping on everything. Again, that's dell.com slash deals. Watching Utah's Money is brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. The IRS is coming for high-income taxpayers today. The agency will be sending out at least 125,000 compliance letters to uh, high earners that cheated on their taxes. Tax authorities say they've been cheated out of hundreds of millions of dollars. If you ever wanted IHOP and Applebee's at the same time, you're in luck. A dining company is looking at launching dual brand restaurants to the U.S. The CEO says the prototype has been or had success in uh, several other countries and that shared space helps with efficiency. Japan's Nikkei index has uh, hit a hot record high, closing above 40,000 points for the first time ever today. The index has risen more than 20 percent so far in 2024. The NASDAQ and the S&P both hit new highs last week, and I was noticing that Bank of America thinks that uh, the S&P 500 could get as high as 5,400. It's at 5,139 right now as we start the morning. Speaking of starting the morning, the futures are down just a little bit. The Dow off 103. That's closing in on three-tenths of a percent. The S&P is down just a tenth, down six and a quarter. And uh, the NASDAQ actually in the green to start the morning. Up uh, seven and a half points. Good speeds across uh, across the Wasatch Front on dry roads so far this morning. I guess that snow we saw on the UDOT cameras down in Utah County was just a passing flurry uh, because uh, the team at the, the uh, traffic center said they can't find it. But we'll check it all with traffic and weather together next. I love being a bartender. I love waiting tables. But at the end of my shift, my feet were killing me. And so I had to pretend like I was having a good time, and really, I couldn't wait to sit down. But it wasn't just my feet, it was also my knees were achy. A lot of neck pain, too. I was in so much pain, I kind of lost hope, really. And then I saw the Good Feet store, and that's when everything changed. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Kristen enjoy their work again without their feet getting in the way. It was pretty shocking to realize that I'd been in so much pain and suddenly I'm completely pain free. Now that I have the Good Feet Arch Supports, I don't have to pretend to be happy. I'm genuinely happy. So, cheers. My name is Kristen and that's my Good Feet story. See what we can do for you with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. Stop by the Good Feet store in Farmington, Riverton, or Sandy for a free fitting. Call 1-800-NEW-FEET or visit goodfeet.com. The Cougars are fighting for their best chance in the big dance. BYU has displayed its resiliency throughout this campaign. Wow. The Big 12 tournament is days away, and then it's the NCAA tournament. This Wednesday, it's BYU, Iowa State. Free game is at 5 and tip off at 6 on Utah's legacy home for the Cougars. KSL News Radio. Coming up on 529, traffic and weather together. Again, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Here's Andy Farnsworth. And we're so far rolling through Salt Lake County, at least on I-15 and 215. If you're in Tooele County, just a bit of heavy traffic going through Stansbury Park right now before the SR-138 intersection. But then you find through Lake Point and on to I-80. Heather? We're looking good through Weburn Davis County still. Not a whole lot of traffic yet. We shouldn't see any delays. And for another hour at least on southbound I-15 from Ogden to Salt Lake. And right now that's taking less than 30 minutes. You also have a good drive on Legacy Parkway in the west side belt if you use those to get to the airport. Eric. 
Looks like we got a crash uh, in uh, Utah County. This is a uh, northbound I-15 over on the right shoulder uh, north of Center Street in Provo. Uh, so it looks like uh, something to at least pay attention to. Uh, we aren't seeing any delays go through there. So you're still looking at a 28-minute drive time from Payson up to Point of the Mountain. Uh, getting out to the mountains, no trouble uh, to the Wasatch back on I-80 or uh, 189 through Provo Canyon. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Coldest day of the next week is today. Uh, We'll only get to 38 degrees for a high, and then we'll settle into the upper 40s, lower 50s throughout the rest of the seven-day period. And there's on-again, off-again chances of showers uh, today through at least Thursday, 30 to 40 percent chance. And some of that snow could be affecting our morning drive a little later, so we'll keep an eye on that this morning. Right now, cloudy skies, 28 degrees. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon. On KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 5.30. And our top story this half hour, snow is falling in some areas along the Wasatch Front this morning, and more is on its way. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our live team coverage. Adam? Tim, the good news is we've already seen the bulk of this storm come through, but KSL meteorologist Matt Johnson says a low-pressure system is keeping the jet stream open for snow potentially into this afternoon. How much snow are we talking about? Hey, maybe a trace to an inch for the valley with the snow showers we're expecting today. There's also a couple of snow showers from Fillmore north and east to the Bookcliff Mountains, and that's really about it. You're noticing Alta maybe two to five inches. Right now on the KSL Vortex, I'm seeing a huge snow cell over the Great Salt Lake. It's starting to make its way into Davis County, into Weber County, also up into Box Elder County on I-84. So northern, far northern Utah predominantly hit right now. Again, though, that could linger uh, into tonight where Matt says it should taper off into mostly cloudy skies. But there is a very slight chance of rain or snow uh, for the next several days, I'll have to keep an eye on. Reporting live, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. The series of storms that hit the state over the weekend increased avalanche danger and caused hundreds of crashes. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston continues on live team coverage. Peter? Tim, whoever shook Utah Snow Globe put the mountains in a sketchy position. I'm looking at the Utah Avalanche Center right now, and we're seeing red or high avalanche danger in the Uintas and around Skyline area. It's just a step below that up and down the Wasatch Front, so you skiers, snowboarders, and splitboarders should steer clear of the red zones. As for crashes, we did see over 300 car crashes just Saturday and Sunday. One of those days had over 180 crashes. So today we will be seeing another 2 to 5 inches sprinkle on the mountainsides, but make sure you check kslnewsradio.com for more details throughout the morning. Reporting live, Peter Johnston. KSL News Radio. The storm Im- impacting us over the weekend caused some serious problems in California. ABC's Rihanna Alley has more. Rescuers working to reach drivers after the most brutal blizzard of the season swept through the Sierra Nevada mountains, dumping up to 12 feet of snow and packing wind gusts of up to 190 miles per hour. More than 300 vehicles got stuck on Interstate 80. Parts of the highway shut down for days. Officers going car to car. And although this storm has passed, another one is on the way tonight. There was even a video of some uh, semi-truck trailers that were pulled off to the side of the road, and the drivers just abandoned them, caught a ride with somebody else, and they'll retrieve their truck later. Uh, The only open road into the Tahoe area was also briefly closed after a small avalanche. Back here in northern Utah, homeless shelters were allowed to house more people overnight because of a code blue alert. Overnight, the forecast called for temperatures or wind chills to drop below 15 degrees for at least two hours over a 24-hour period. So Salt Lake County was one of many where authorities issued a code blue alert, freeing up homeless shelters to house more people and for local officials to open more emergency beds. Later today, there's already a code blue alert in place for Cash, Carbon, Duchesne, Morgan, San Pete, Summit, Uinta, and Wasatch counties. Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. Governor Cox is praising a new homeless funding package, even though the final amount is well beneath the proposed budget. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit is live with those details. Michael? Tim, the governor initially hoped for a $193 million budget to help the homeless. Instead, the legislature approved only $66.2 million on Friday. With only that fraction, some are calling this package an underwear and socks budget. 
You see, the plan was 130 of that 193 million was supposed to go to emergency shelter, with the rest divvied between other services like homelessness prevention and first-time home buying. Still, Governor Cox applauded the final budget, saying it'll quote keep all Utahns safe and improve our cities, counties, and businesses. A close quote. Reporting live, Michael Commits, KSL News Radio. Food pantries in Utah are struggling to keep up with demand. KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson explains. Crossroads Urban Center says they're seeing twice as many people visiting their food pantries as they did last year. They cite the high price of housing and food right now as the top reasons people come to them for help. And they're asking for donations so they can continue to serve people who are struggling to make ends meet. Crossroads isn't the only food pantry in need. Food banks all across Utah are struggling to keep up with the demand. KSL's top national stories this hour. The Supreme Court could announce today if former President Donald Trump is eligible to be on the ballot in three state primaries. ABC's legal analyst Royal Oaks has more. The expectation is that the high court will issue its opinion in the Colorado case that found Trump was barred from the ballot as an insurrectionist. The timing makes sense because as a huge number of citizens go to the polls the next day to vote in several Super Tuesday primaries, the Supreme Court likely wants the electorate to be aware of its decision. The former president was also removed from the primary in Michigan and Illinois. Time for first look traffic. That means Andy Farnsworth is in the traffic center. At least he was. I was. There he is. And I am. <laughs> Here's what we got right now. Open uh, the canyons, but we've got restrictions in big and little. If you're going to go into Spanish Fort Canyon, the further in you go, the more snowy it gets, especially near Soldier Summit. But that's something to plan ahead for. Uh, going into Parley's right now, pretty dry. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. It was quite a sight over the weekend. U.S. military planes began dropping food aid into Gaza. ABC's Steve Ganyard has more. Part of the Air Force crew's mission is being able to airdrop supplies. So in this case, uh, it's not U.S. forces. Uh, obviously, they're close to the ground, and so you need a permissive environment where people aren't shooting at you. Uh, presumably, none of, of Hamas would be shooting at the U.S. while they were trying to deliver this aid. But the whole idea here is that it's a mission that's fairly routine and that the U.S. Air Force cargo crews practice it, and they've got technologies that make it uh, quite precise. About 38,000 meals were dropped and more are planned. A USU student is raising money for a school project to send floral arrangements to grieving pet owners. Jace Lee Paul says this project is just a few weeks old and already she's helped deliver 35 arrangements to families who have lost their beloved pets. I've had a lot of friends as well as myself that I've had to put pets down and I know how hard it can be so I wanted to do something that kind of gave back to my community as well as gave back to people who are having to face that difficult decision. She hopes to one day experience Expand to a full-fledged business. In the meantime, Jace Lee is relying on money raised on a GoFundMe account, Paws and Petals Project, and hopes to involve shelters and area vet hospitals. Mark Jackson, KSL News Radio. And a Lehigh teenager who died after a motorcycle crash last month has now helped four other people live through organ donation. Zeke Gordon's aunt spoke with KSL TV. My brother just said to please remember not to waste any time with your loved ones because we don't know what we have until it's gone. She says they can feel some comfort knowing that uh, Zeke lives on in the lives of people he helped save. What a great story. One crash northbound I-15 in Provo over to the uh, right shoulder now, but flow's being impeded just a little bit. We'll check traffic and weather together next. It's do or die for Nikki Haley. I'm willing to take the cuts because I think... Good things come when you go through the pain. Special coverage all day Monday and Tuesday with results and election night coverage starting Tuesday at 5 on KSL News Radio. Going to a jazz game is more fun together. Host an unforgettable night at Delta Center with colleagues, friends, families, whoever. Group tickets are the best way to get everyone together to cheer on the jazz. Pick from a variety of options for seating, dining, and game day experiences. Start planning your big night at the game by calling 801-355-DUMP, emailing group sales at utahjazz.com, or simply visiting utahjazz.com slash tickets. If you're struggling with your mortgage, there's a free government program that offers expert one-on-one -on -one advice about your mortgage options. Call 1-888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. It was cold enough last night in some places that a, a code blue alert was triggered. 
We may have a repeat performance of that uh, coming up to- tonight and into tomorrow morning as we expect below freezing temperatures. We'll have more on that coming up in just a minute. 539, time for a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Here's Andy Farnsworth. So far, I-15 from Draper to downtown, less than 20-minute commute uh, with good speeds. The only thing that might slow you a little bit is a stretch on the collector between I-15 and and I-80, so if you're going south, around 21st south, and then you get ready to switch on to eastbound 80, it might just be a little bit slow in South Salt Lake. But coming out of Tooele, I-80 and the 201 freeway are delay-free. Heather? No problems right now up north through Weber and Davis County, even trying to go between Brigham City and Logan and Sardine Canyon. That looks like a pretty good drive, although some areas of the roadway may still have a little bit of moisture and it's cold enough to freeze, so just use caution as the roads may be slick in some areas. But right now, southbound I-15 has most of your traffic from Ogden to Salt Lake, and that's less than 30 minutes. Eric. One crash northbound I-15 in Provo. This is just past Center Street, so far on the right shoulder. We've got a lot of lanes down there, and uh, at this point, not a lot of volume, so we don't have any slowness going by there. Uh, the rest of the trip all the way up to Point of the Mountain looking good. 189 through Provo Canyon in good shape if you're heading out through Spanish Fork Canyon. Uh, the further you go, the worse it's going to get past Tucker over to the Soldier Summit area. That's where snow is impacting the drive. I'm Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. The last piece of our storm system over the weekend will slide through today. That'll keep snow showers in play, high of only 38. Overnight, 26 clearing skies. For tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds, 46 the high. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now in Salt Lake City, it is 28 degrees. We were told on Friday that this wildfire in Texas, it has now burned over a million acres, is the biggest wildfire in Texas's history. And here we are at the very beginning of March. It actually started at the end of February. There evidently are some clues about the possible cause of what they're calling the Smokehouse Creek blaze. We're going to head to uh, Dallas and check in with Jim Ryan here in just a minute, get the very latest. So stay with me. Remember to look for us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek. This one time, my parents had to round up the whole neighborhood to track me down. It was a mess, a lot of tears. Well, now that we got Xfinity, we have Wi Fi all over the house, including all my favorite super secret hiding spots. So I can kill time in here by streaming my shows and. Ha! Found you. The heck? How? You left to find my tablet on. This generation, ruining the game with their performance enhancers. Get wall to wall Wi Fi on the Xfinity 10G network for a reliable connection throughout your home. Now through March 21st, new customers can get started with 200 megabit internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and get Wi-Fi equipment included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. Xfinity 10G network brings improved speed, security, reliability, and latency. Xfinity 10 gigabit service tier subject to permitting and construction requirements. For over 80 years, Farm Bureau Financial Services has been protecting farmers and ranchers season after season. You need to know you're covered and you've got somebody covering your back. You've got local people that everybody knows. And we have a good policy and a good agent, and I guess that's what you need to be able to sleep at night. Loyal, local, and rooted in ag for over 80 years. Learn more at fbfs.com slash rooted in ag. It's your future. Let's protect it. Good morning. I'm the 40% off window company. 40% off? Of what? Hey, 40% off. Yeah, I'll bet it's your biggest sale of the year. This week only, because you need a model home in our neighborhood. Well... Well, nothing. It's baloney. Hi, this is Kathy. The Doug of Window World. When you hear those things, you know you've entered the baloney zone. Resist the force of the baloney zone. Find Window World online at windowworldutah.com. Or call Window World at 281-8111. That's 281-8111. And that's no baloney. Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. Our goal every day on Inside Sources is to help you divide the rage from the reason, elevate the conversation, connect the dots, and make the news make sense in your world. We have conversations with great thinkers, with great leaders, and great people who are just out there making a difference in the world. Now, we do talk about politics, but only so we can discuss society and culture. And then we explore society and culture so we can discuss principles and the people in America and the state of Utah who actually live them and apply them every day. 
We bring the best and brightest minds to the state of Utah, and we love to take the Utah model and send it out to our nation's capital and beyond. Every day on Inside Sources, you'll be part of that conversation. To help you understand things in a different way, we'll get you to think again about what you think you know. But most important, we're going to help you have confidence to have crucial conversations in your community and in your own home. Join Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson, 1 to 3, on KSL News Radio. Good morning, KSL News Time, 545. The three things you need to know this hour. First, more snow for the morning drive, and the storm could stick around for the next several hours. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, food pantries throughout the state say they're struggling to keep up with demand. Third, it's traffic and weather together. Got some snowy conditions now hitting the roadways up in the Ogden down towards Layton area and got uh, traffic uh, trying to pass a crash in Utah County on the right shoulder just after Center Street in Provo heading north to Orem. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. 38 with a chance for snow showers today, then drier and warmer tomorrow. I'm Matt Johnson. 28 degrees in Salt Lake City with a quick look at our top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. The European Union has leveled its first antitrust penalty against Apple, fining the company nearly $2 billion for breaking competition laws in its music service. Just in to ABC News, Alan Weiselberg, the former chief financial officer of the Trump Organization, will plead guilty today to perjury charges. The Supreme Court expected to deliver at least one decision today. It could be the one involving Colorado's attempt to remove Donald Trump from the ballot because of his role in the Capitol riot. Tomorrow is Super Tuesday. Israel under increasing pressure to finish negotiations on a ceasefire in Gaza. A six-week ceasefire is currently being negotiated in Egypt. Israel is not attending the negotiations in Cairo. According to Israeli media, Israel is demanding Hamas turn over a full list of living hostages before any ceasefire deal moves forward. ABC's Ike Ajachi, the U.S. started dropping aid packages by air over the weekend to Gaza. Vice President Harris calling for a ceasefire. This is ABC News. All right, let's go in depth here. Firefighters still struggling to get control over the biggest wildfire Texas has ever seen. ABC News correspondent Jim Ryan joins me live. I think we were told, Jim, that uh, on Friday it was only 3% contained. Mm. Is it any more than that this morning? Well, as of yesterday afternoon, it was 15%. Uh, so little by little, they're getting the upper hand on this. And some of the other fires up there, uh, they're having much better success. The Windy Deuce Fire, which is a little to the west of the big one, the Smokehouse Creek Fire, it now is 55% contained. But, yes, the one that's burned, and, and so far Smokehouse Creek has burned, one million seventy six thousand six hundred six thirty six hundred thirty eight acres. That's larger than the state of Rhode Island. Sounds like uh, plenty of supports coming from surrounding states. I'm not sure if any Utah groups are down there, but maybe. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, uh, obviously Utah has some expertise in this area too. So Utah, I know Colorado has, Oklahoma, Oklahoma butts right up against the Texas Panhandle where these fires are raging right now. The other support is coming from all over the state of Texas. Some of it aerial support. A couple of tankers were sent there yesterday from Abilene. Uh, helicopter tankers, uh, fixed wing aircraft, they're all going up there along with the firefighters, boots on the ground from all over the region to help try to bring this under control, Tim. Did I see that uh, they may have a hint at least at how this whole thing got started? Potentially, yes. Uh, there, there's been evidence found that a power line might have uh, fallen, might have been knocked over, that might not have been properly maintained. Uh, and so the company in charge of that power line is uh, being asked questions. You know, it's been photographed and uh, so yeah, they, that company has been put on notice. You know, they're looking for responsibility, obviously to help defray the cost of this, the massive wildfire property damage done, you know, homes lost, and uh, and certainly the cost of the firefighting effort. So, yeah, that's at least a hint of what might have caused it. There were no thunderstorms in the area at the time a week ago when this first of the fire started. Wow. When you look at what's happened in California with lawsuits against PG&E, I mean, yeah. if, if that is indeed proven to be the case, uh, it could be the beginning of a whole string of lawsuits. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, that, that was my first thought when, when I saw that, that it might have been somehow the, the responsibility of a, a power company, a power line falling that started this whole thing. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that, again, the investigation is still very early on. They're still trying to douse the flames. Last question. Have they been able to push this thing or direct it away from any more uh, buildings, any more homes? 
Well, not really. I mean, they, that's part of the effort here. They, they, they've they set uh, some intentional fires to burn the fuel in front of this massive fire. And that has worked in limited cases. There's some dramatic video captured by a deer camera, you know, a deer field on a, on a deer lease captured uh, kind of a time lapse of the fire moving across the area, consuming all that land and then leaving nothing but charred branches and ashes. All right, Uh, Jim, thank you, and good luck to the uh, folks down there that may be in the path of this crazy fire. Uh, Jim Ryan, ABC News correspondent, checking in with us from Dallas on the in-depth at 15 and 45. It's now 549. Time for a look at uh, the drive, what there is of it anyway. Traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. How are we looking, Andy? Well, in Salt Lake County, it hasn't been too bad. The storm hasn't reached the valley, so roads are dry between Salt Lake and Draper in both directions. We've got uh, Bangor and Mountain View yet to see any significant slowing at any of the intersections going through uh, towards 21st South. But it's a little heavy in Tooele County, stands Park right now on SR 36. Heather? Well, we still don't have a whole lot of traffic through Weber and Davis County, but we do have some snow falling, and our KSL traffic trooper Lee tells us that he's been experiencing this snowfall from Layton, heading all the way up into the Ogden area where things look a bit foggy as well. The snow is starting to waft across some of the roadways and making them a little bit damp. It's cold enough to freeze, so that could become icy. Just use some caution, especially on I-15 and the city streets. Eric? In Utah County, I-15 is in pretty decent shape. Uh, We have uh, no uh, real problems involving uh, wet uh, conditions from Santa Quinn Payson all the way to Thanksgiving Point. Uh, One crash uh, that we do have is in Provo. This is northbound 15, just past Center Street. It's uh, over to the right shoulder and doesn't seem to be ma- making an impact. If you're over on the 215 East Belt, that looks good heading north alongside the mountains to Foothill Drive at this early hour. Foothill looks good up to the University of Utah. Don't let tax problems ruin your life. Let Utah Tax Attorney Jordan Wilcox handle the IRS so you don't have to. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 day forecast on the chilly side today. 38 degrees with a chance for snow showers. 46 tomorrow, partly cloudy. We'll then go 51 on Wednesday. Yes, warmer, but a chance for some rain, snow, showers. 46 mostly cloudy for Thursday. Friday, 41, partly cloudy. Up to the upper 40s and low 50s for both Saturday and Sunday with some sunshine and clouds. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, cloudy skies downtown, 28 degrees. And the seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Tomorrow is Super Tuesday, and that means for uh, Republican on the Republican side of uh, the voting situation, it'll be a caucus this year. Boyd Matheson, I'm sure, is going to be covering this uh, very closely. We'll have coverage, of course, not just today and tomorrow, but remember to be here Wednesday morning with both uh, Amanda and me as we uh, look at some of the results from uh, all of the voting that will be taking place across the country. But uh, Boyd Matheson is going to be specifically looking at uh, how you can take part in the caucus night and uh, details of all the things you need to know, where to go, who's eligible to vote, what to do if you can't be there in person, and a lot of other things. So that's coming up today and tomorrow, 1.30 on uh, the first hour of Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson here on KSL News Radio. We'll check money news coming up next. Are you looking to get a COVID-19 booster to stay healthy this cold and flu season? If you join the Beehive Study, you'll have the chance to receive up to $550 for getting a booster and completing weekly COVID tests and brief surveys about your health. Don't want to get a COVID-19 booster? That's okay too. You can still join the Beehive Study and receive up to $550 for completing weekly COVID tests and surveys. Help advance research at the University of Utah while taking care of yourself this season. Call 801-203-0320 or email beehivestudy at utah.edu to learn more. You can also visit the study website at beehivestudy.com. Get up to a 20% bonus and up to 12% per year guaranteed for your retirement income. These guarantees are too good to pass up and can give you lifelong income security. Up to 20% up front just for opening an account and up to 12% per year guaranteed. Call Trajan Wealth today. 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. 
or visit TrajanWealth.com. Guarantees are based on the claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. Visit the contest page on KSLNewsRadio.com. This week, win tickets to comedian Jim Gaffigan on the Barely Alive Tour, Friday, October 25th at the Eccles Theater. Or win tickets to an upcoming Real Salt Lake match. Listen to the RSL game on KSLSports.com. Plus, win tickets to see Tim McGraw on his Standing Room Only Tour, April 5th at the Delta Center. Text the word contest to 57500 or go to KSLNewsRadio.com slash contests. Boyd Matheson, listening to inside sources is a little different from just reading the headlines because we're always going to get you into that think again moment. We have experts from around the country, across the world, and right here local to home that'll help us dive in and get past just the hype, the fluff, the fake fights, and the false choice so we can get into the news to help you connect the dots and make the news make sense. Join Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson, 1 to 3, on KSL News Radio. Watching Utah's Money is brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Chicago and Houston are being called the most financially distressed cities in the U.S. A Wallet Hub analysis looked at the number of bankruptcy filings, credit scores, and accounts in forbearance, determining the cities with the most people worried about money. Real estate developers are seeing uh, and noticing a new population within millennials and empty nesters, dubbing them forever renters. They are choosing to rent instead of buy, mostly because of the lack of small starter homes. Bigger and newer apartments are becoming ideal for their location, uh, location and ease. The European Union is fining Apple nearly $2 billion. ABC just reported this a few minutes ago, but for uh, unfairly favoring its own music streaming service over rivals. The EU claims that Apple broke the law by, quote, restricting developers from informing customers about alternative, cheaper music services available. It's the third biggest antitrust fine the EU has commissioned. All right, let's take a look at how the markets are doing uh, this hour. Mixed. And that's the way we started the morning. The uh, futures of the Dow down about 107. The S&P is down less than five. The NASDAQ, the only one in the green this morning. It's actually up 13 and a half points. Gold, by the way, is down about $4.70 an ounce. Time this morning for Cougar Tracks, brought to you by Central Bank, CB Vault, Utah's help center for startups and entrepreneurs. Visit cbutah.com. Here's BYU insider Mitch Harper. The good times continue to roll for BYU basketball. On Saturday, BYU stormed back from a 17-point halftime deficit to defeat TCU 87-75. It was the largest comeback at the midway point of a game in the Mark Pope era. Pope credits one key attribute from his team to pull off the comeback. These guys demonstrated toughness tonight. You know, toughness, sometimes we mistake. Sometimes we mistake toughness for yelling and screaming and fouling and grabbing and punching. But actually toughness, real toughness, is the ability to focus when everything around you is going sideways and you don't even feel right yourself. And these guys were brilliant with their toughness tonight. BYU is now 21-8 and overall and 9-7 and in Big 12 Conference play. It's back on the road for the Cougars as they travel to take on nationally ranked Iowa State this Wednesday night in Ames. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. right here on KSL. With Cougar Tracks, I'm Mitch Harper on your legacy home of the BYU Cougars. KSL News Radio. Are you a startup, entrepreneur, or business owner looking for funding? Look no further than Central Bank's CB Vault, Utah's help center for startups and entrepreneurs. CB Vault understands the unique challenges faced by business owners. CB Vault is here to help you start, grow, or thrive with a dedicated help center for startups and entrepreneurs, providing personalized financial solutions, networking, and guidance for every step of the way. With a range of services tailored for startups and small businesses and expert financial advice to flexible loan options, CB Vault helps you get funding and allows you to keep your equity. Whether you're seeking funding, planning expansion, or navigating the financial landscape, CB Vault's team of experts is ready to assist you in turning your vision into reality. Don't let financial barriers hold you back. Central Bank's CB Vault is here to unlock your business potential. Visit CB Vault today at cbutah.com. Central Bank, voted best bank in Utah Valley. Strong, local, secure. Since 1891, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. 
Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Tomorrow's vote may seal the race for president. The two major parties in Utah are taking opposite approaches. Democrats will have a primary election. The United Utah Party and American Independent Party will also be having their caucuses. It all begins by showing up. Caucus night is the opportunity to do that. Super Tuesday. 16 states and territories vote and more than 1,000 delegates are awarded. Listen for special coverage today and tomorrow. Plus, get analysis and reaction all day Wednesday. You Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus on KSL News Radio. KSL News Time 529. Traffic and weather together is brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Here again is Andy Farnsworth. Seeing traffic building up now a little bit on uh, Mountain View Corridor as you go through West Valley, those intersections. So far, Bangor are still in good shape, though, from the south end of the valley up to uh, the airport. I-15 yet to see any delay. And road conditions in the Salt Lake Valley still dry. Heather? Well, the road conditions up in Weber and Davis County are getting a bit moist due to snow falling. And that could be freezing to the roadway, making things a bit slick. Traffic is starting to fill in southbound I-15 from Ogden to Salt Lake, so you're about 30 minutes. If you're going through Weber County, the snow is coming down a bit harder and starting to stick to the roadways, especially closer to Mountain Green and Morgan. Eric. Still got a crash in Utah County, northbound I-15, just past Center Street. But it's over in, in the uh, on the right shoulder, so not really causing any kind of delays. Not at this point. Uh, we're still looking at a 30-minute drive northbound from uh, San, uh, from uh, Santa Quinn up to Point of the Mountain. If you're heading out to the Wasatch Back, uh, US 40 is uh, looking good. Uh, once you get there, 189 through Provo Canyon and I-80 through Parley's Canyon, both in good shape too. Attention Wasatch Front businesses and property managers. Go Pave Utah is a full-service parking lot, paving, repair, and maintenance company servicing the Wasatch Front. Contact Go Pave Utah today. GoPaveUtah.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. We will look for a high today, uh, coldest day of the week, by the way. A high of only 38 with about a 30% chance of showers. We warmed to 51 degrees by Wednesday with a chance of precipitation carrying all the way through Thursday of this week. Boy, Saturday looks beautiful, though. It's 28 degrees downtown. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good morning. KSL News Time is 6 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Tim Hughes, Amanda Dixon with the morning off. Our top story this hour, two people are dead following a workplace shooting in Salt Lake City over the weekend. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is following the investigation and has the very latest. Adam? Tim, police say the first 911 call came in around 2.30 yesterday from one of the employees working at Varex Imaging near 1700 South, 2700 West. Salt Lake City Police spokesperson Bryn Weisberg says when officers arrived, one person was found dead inside the business, another outside with a gun nearby, and there were other employees on site that police are also trying to help. When there is workplace violence, that can have an emotional toll on them, a very um, profound impact on them. That's why we want to make sure that our social workers and our victim advocates are on scene to help them. A company spokesperson later told KSL the alleged shooter was one of the two people killed, but in terms of motive, police are still investigating. Live Adam Small, KSL News Radio. A South Salt Lake 18 year old is facing a murder charge after a fight between friends ended in gunshots. Police say a 17 year old died inside Anthony Woodrow's home. Woodrow told police he was afraid of being attacked. Utah will play a part in choosing the two main presidential nominees tomorrow. But the way voters can do that gets a little confusing. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Tim, Republicans are running an in-person poll while Democrats are doing a mail-in primary. What that looks like tomorrow is that local party precincts at churches, schools, and people's homes are going to open their doors to register Republicans only. Attendees can cast a vote for Donald Trump, Nikki Haley, or Ryan Binkley. Registered Utah Democrats have already received ballots in the mail from the lieutenant governor's office and they need to get those in the mailbox by tomorrow to count. There will be caucuses open to any Utah voter, but the only thing attendees will vote for is a delegate to represent them at August's Democratic National Convention. We're going to have an article breaking down the process for these parties and some others on kslnewsradio.com. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Voters around the country expressing their worries about the age of the leading presidential candidates. 
ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Trump and Biden have both faced questions about their age and mental acuity. In recent days, Biden mixed up Ukraine and Gaza. In the coming days, we're going to join with our friends in Jordan and others in providing airdrops of, of uh, additional food supplies in Ukraine. And over the weekend, Trump again appeared to mix up Biden and former President Obama. Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear war. In presidential primaries over the weekend, President Trump won in Idaho, Missouri, and Michigan. Nikki Haley uh, getting her first primary win in Washington, D.C. The former chief financial officer of the Trump Organization is expected to plead guilty to perjury charges today. Alan Weiselberg uh, arrived at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office early this morning. He's expected to enter that plea later in the day. Two-thirds of Utah hospitals are now in compliance with hospital price transparency laws. But KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson says the other third will still need to get on board. Since 2021, hospitals have been required to provide pricing lists for all their services with and without insurance. PatientRightsAdvocate.org says price listings are important because patients can shop around for their health care and make sure they aren't being overcharged. The group's new report shows 16 out of 24 Utah hospitals they investigated are in compliance. Common Spirit Health and Intermountain Health facilities are among those praised for their compliance, while HCA Healthcare was slammed in the report for their lack of transparency. A missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has died in New Jersey from some kind of medical problem. A spokesperson for the church says that Elder Mac Jared Chapel uh, became unresponsive over the weekend, couldn't be revived. The 19-year-old was from Sugar City, Idaho. It's unclear what that medical emergency was. Educators at Highland High School took feedback from students and created the district's first step team. That feedback hit the ears of Miss Tiffany Rasmussen. Black students come to me and say, look, we're not making the cheer team. We're not making the dance team. We really feel like we don't have a voice here and we're not seen. Rasmussen went to Deirdre Strait. Black Student Union co-chair, whose own kids wished they had a step team to join when they attended Highland High. Straight said it's helped their students on multiple levels. We have heard back from parents that they are so glad their child's participating because they have seen improvements in their students' discipline and then also commitment to academics. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. First look traffic, let's go back to the traffic center, and it looks like, Andy, for the most part, Mother Nature's staying out of the mix so far. Yeah, in the Salt Lake Valley for sure, Utah County, but if you go a little bit further north, we've seen uh, wet conditions starting to affect I-15, kind of in Roy along I-84 going into Weber Canyon, and uh, really north of Layton is where you'll you'll start to notice weather having any effect on the roads right now. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Speaking of traffic, UDOT hopes longer green lights will help ease traffic congestion in fast-growing northern Utah County. UDOT is making a major change to commuter roads in Lehigh in an attempt to ease traffic. They're implementing longer green lights on 2100 North, Pioneer Crossing, and Redwood Road. The green lights will be extended specifically for the evening commute right now, but by March 12th, it'll also be implemented for the morning commute. UDOT says this is mainly to help ease traffic caused by rapid growth in the area, which has seen more than 60,000 new residents move in over the last three years. Emma Keddington, KSL News Radio. It's that time of year where potholes start uh, popping up on the roads thanks to the freeze thaw cycle. KSL News Radio's Britt Johnson takes a look. The freeze thaw cycle really does a number on Utah roads. During the cold winter months, maintenance crews have to put temporary solutions into place. Soon they'll be out adding more permanent fixes. Until then, John Gleason with UDOT says if you see a pothole ahead, proceed with caution. Potholes can cause tire damage or even accidents. UDOT hopes to manage them the best they can over the next few months. A couple from Highland are competing in a cabin renovation reality TV show. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit has more on what they'll be doing. Michael. Tim, Jeremy and Jessica Rock have only been married for less than a year, but they made quite the underdog story in this season of Cabin Oars, Flip It to Win It, down in New Orleans. They were given 20 grand and a month to flip an old cabin. When we told people we were going to do this because we are newlyweds, they were like, oh, this will be a real test of your teamwork. <laughs> Now it took a lot, but they went for a lightly they went for a light, heavy outdoor theme, and now there's a chance they could win the forty thousand dollars season prize. We'll find out if they make it to the podium when the show streams later on in April. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. If they win, maybe they can build a cabin of their dreams, huh? 
Mountain, uh, or excuse me, Monday morning commuters are uh, finding more wet roads around Ogden than further south to start things off. The canyons uh, expecting to get some more snow before we're done here this morning. We'll check traffic and weather together next. Spend your workday with a talk show that makes you feel better about the news. Dave and Dejanovic. They have a good dynamic between the two of them. Sometimes I'll take Dave's side and sometimes I'll take Debbie's side. They're great. Dave and Debbie, live from 9 to noon or podcast the show on the app for KSL News Radio. Do you know the secret to losing up to one pound of fat every day? At slcfatloss.com, we know the secret. Our unique weight loss program makes it easy to lose weight, get healthy, and get your energy back naturally, safely, and effectively. If you'd like to lose unhealthy fat without counting points, no exercising, no prepackaged meals, no surgery, and no injections with the risk of serious side effects, go to slcfatloss.com now to schedule your free consultation in person or virtually. This is Maria Shaleos. If you are done being exhausted, with the same old stubborn weight problem. Do what I did and find out the secret to losing up to a pound per day. I've lost 17 pounds in just one month, and I've done it naturally and safely. Schedule your free consultation in person or virtually slcfatloss.com. Many clients lose 20 to 30 pounds in about a month or two. That's up to a pound per day. For your free private weight loss consultation, call 801-450-1882 or go to slcfatloss.com. That's slcfatloss.com. Results may vary. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. So you just used bug spray in your home. Now what? Well, between the waiting and waiting for things to dry up, and keeping your family away from the mess, it hits you. You could have used Zevo. Unlike other bug sprays that stick around, Zevo goes from kill to clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. We had a couple of shootings over the weekend in Salt Lake City. One of them, a workplace shooting, left two people dead. The investigation is continuing this morning, and Adam Small is following the story for us. KSL News Time now is 609. Traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Here again is Andy Farnsworth. And so far, so good. Draper to downtown on I 15. City streets in the valley are starting to fill in in their usual areas at uh, intersections along Mountain View. You're going to see busier traffic. But for the most part, You'll be able to get through, uh, get to the freeways if you're going that far with a uh, little delay in Salt Lake. In Tooele County, some earlier heavy traffic on SR 36 is cleared from Stansbury Park. Heather? And we do have snow falling in Weber and Davis counties, and it's starting to stick to some of the roadways, especially on US 89 and I 84 right in the Weber Canyon area. You'll also see snow plows going through Weber Canyon between Mountain Green and Ogden. Southbound I 15 traffic getting pretty thick. It's also slowing down a bit because of the wet road conditions and again you're seeing the snow build up in between the lanes of travel eric i-15 looks fine utah county right now it looks like uh, the only crash that we've had so far is a right shoulder crash in provo just past center street uh, the rest of the way uh, looks good all the way to the point of the mountain if you're on the wasatch back us 40 coming out of heber city heading by jordan l reservoir up to i-80 that's in good shape although if you exit uh, us 40 on to uh, sr32 and go up to the south end of jordan l that way uh, you do have some slowing there that's probably a uh, road construction uh, revere health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Another chilly March day on tap, high of only 38 with a chance for snow showers. Overnight, we'll drop off to 26. Tomorrow, 46, partly cloudy skies. Maybe another chance for some showers on Wednesday, but warmer, 51. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now in Salt Lake City, it is uh, 28 degrees. We told you last hour that the expectation this morning, somewhere around 8 o'clock our time, 10 o'clock Eastern, is that the Supreme Court will release some opinions on some cases that they've heard this term. And among them is the Trump v. Anderson. Now, you may not be familiar with the name of that particular court case, 
But that is the case determining whether the Colorado Supreme Court was correct when it removed Donald Trump from the 2024 GOP presidential primary ballot in the state. That decision obviously going to affect a lot of other states that were several of them anyway that are still pending with uh, similar legislation. So, or, uh, so we will uh, follow it this morning and check in with M. Win here in just a minute on the in-depth. Stay with us and remember you'll always find us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Everybody knows that Les Olson is the place, always has been the place, really, for more than six decades to uh, get your copier or printer. But did you know that they are now Les Olson IT? And they can help you with all of your uh, tech needs going into the future. And I can't think of any bigger stress or question mark for businesses of all sizes, mom and pop, right up to the large businesses and institutions here in Utah that struggle with that question. And wonder how they're going to afford to uh, assemble an IT department of their, their own on, on site. You don't have to worry about that anymore. And they can handle everything from uh, being your help desk, uh, helping with cybersecurity, with data backup and data storage, even hardware deployment. But it's the security side of it that will be most uh, comforting, I would think, to business owners and managers with everything from facial recognition to license plate recognition, uh, Les Olson's IT network cabling team will all also be there to run the cable right from the street to your uh, facility and help you decide where you even install the servers. And you can probably do most of that security watch on your phone from home. It's just a fantastic way for your uh, business to look forward to the future and actually grow in the future with Les Olson IT. Find out how they can help you. They've got nine locations from Logan to Las Vegas. And you just uh, get started by going to lessolson.com. Strike gold every day with golden rewards at Golden West Credit Union. Introducing the new Golden West Loyalty Program. Every member can enjoy the gold account, a free savings account with an impressive 6% annual percentage yield. You can fund your gold account in four ways. Opt in to round up your debit card purchases to the nearest dollar with round up rewards. The extra change will automatically be deposited into your gold account. To add even more funds, your Visa Signature, Platinum Rebate, and Visa Rewards Cashback will be deposited directly into your high-yield gold account. The year-end Golden Bonus Dividend will be deposited into your gold account to earn even higher dividends. And take advantage of special promotional offers at Golden West and we will deposit the cash reward, earning you even more. Your gold account savings will add up fast. Secure your free gold account at Golden West Credit Union today or online at gwcu.org. Member NCUA. We'll take care of you. It's complicated. These days, that's how people even describe their relationship status. When it comes to the latest complexities in your car, it's gotten really complicated. The experts at Amco undergo the most rigorous training to stay on top of the latest car technologies, so there's nothing we can't fix. Well, except for that complicated relationship. When it comes to that, you're on your own. Double A, MCL. Check engine light on, we'll check it for free. KSL News Time 615. The three things you need to know this hour. First, Super Tuesday is coming up tomorrow, but Utah voters will have to take different paths to vote for their chosen presidential nominee. I'm KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Second, two people are dead following a workplace shooting in Salt Lake City over the weekend. Third, a look at that drive with traffic and weather together. And we've been moving well in the Salt Lake and Utah counties uh, on I-15. Even a crash in Utah County didn't cause any delay. Uh, but we've got wet and snowy conditions affecting your drive north of Layton. Although not any major backups yet, please be careful driving through that area. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Cold with snow showers today, high of only 38. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 28 downtown with a look at our top national story. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. Thousands of people in California's Sierra Nevada mountains bracing themselves for another round of snowstorms, even as they try to crawl out from the blizzard that hit over the weekend. ABC's Faith of Ube is in Truckee, California with more. More than seven feet of snow falling in some areas over three days. 
hundreds of drivers trapped on Interstate 80 for hours. Officers going vehicle to vehicle checking on stranded drivers, among them a mother and her newborn baby who ran out of gas. Even some emergency vehicles and tow trucks unable to handle the brutal conditions. There's no estimate on when I-80 will reopen or when they'll be able to get to stranded cars. No one was seriously hurt. All right, let's go in depth here. In just a few hours, the Supreme Court will decide if former President Donald Trump is eligible for Colorado's primary ballot. Joining me live with more details, ABC News correspondent M. Wynn. This uh, ruling, M., could really uh, affect more than just Colorado. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are a number of other pending decisions happening in other states, including Illinois and Maine. And overall, the implications could be really nationwide. Uh, Essentially, this case is going to decide whether or not Trump will be kicked off the primary ballot due to his efforts to overturn the 2020 election defeat to Joe Biden. And it revolves around Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which prohibits officers of the United States from holding public office who have engaged in insurrection. And remember, Colorado Supreme Court made a ruling weeks ago that Trump was disqualified because they believe he did engage in insurrection. The former president's team appealed, and the U.S. Supreme Court heard oral arguments less than a month ago, which just goes to show the expedited posture of this decision. Now, this is a very unprecedented case. When I was there for oral arguments, the court seemed very reluctant to take the step of barring Trump from appearing on primary ballots this election year. So we'll definitely have to watch and see what happens. Well, the other big question is how they define or if they totally stay away from the term insurrection, isn't it? Exactly. So justices were really tied up with whether or not states can decide if someone engaged in insurrection. They were not convicted, let's say, in this case for Trump, and there's not really further guidance from Congress. So we heard from both liberal and conservative justices that basically asked the question of whether a single state should decide something on a national level, something like the president. And Justice Elena Kagan said that seemed quite extraordinary. Justice Amy Coney Barrett said it just doesn't seem like a state call. Now, on the other side, we heard from the plaintiffs that they believe Trump very clearly tried to overturn the 2020 election and should be banned. We heard from 91-year-old Norma Anderson. She says she's been through a lot of presidents, and she says, quote, this is the first one that is trying to destroy the Constitution. Now, the big thing here, of course, is that Colorado's primary is tomorrow, lumped in with a bunch of other states on Super Tuesday. So this decision is likely to come out in the next hour and a half or so. And we'll be following it. Uh, We appreciate your help this morning. Should uh, the Supreme Court actually weigh into the insurrection side of that? There's a lot of uh, uh, talk out there that it could have effect on special counsel Jack Smith's um, uh, court cases against Donald Trump as well. So we'll uh, have results of that uh, if it indeed comes down from the Supreme Court. And the timing seems like it might just before Super Tuesday. We'll have it for you here on KSL. Let's get a look at the drive this morning with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. And back in the traffic center is Andy Farnsworth. Well, Tim, crash free, at least so far through Salt Lake County. I haven't seen anything pop up uh, that's any kind of big delay yet, thankfully. As uh, travelers take I-15, it's less than 20 minutes between Bluffdale and Salt Lake City. Uh, Mountain View is getting pretty heavy in both directions now, especially in the uh, Kearns portion between 54 and 6200 South. Uh, Coming out of Tooele, though, SR-36 is all right, as is I-80 to the airport. Heather? We've seen several snow plows go through I-15 southbound from Ogden heading into the Roy area and south of that into Clearfield. Also, snow plows going through Weber Canyon between uh, Morgan and Ogden, both directions. Snow is sticking to some of the roadways now, especially US-89 at the ID4 junction. And you have a lot more traffic southbound I-15 from Ogden to Salt Lake. So that's about 30 minutes, maybe slightly more. Eric. Got a little bit more activity over on SR-73 if you're on Eagle Mountain this morning. Eastbound and westbound, some of the stoplights uh, you're seeing it slow down a little bit. Uh, northbound Mountain View Corridor, though, uh, right now is okay getting up to Redwood Road where it turns into 2100 North and then over to the freeway. No problems. I-15 Utah County, northbound from Spanish Fork to Point of the Mountain, your normal 24-minute drive time. Advanced Window Products, $2,500 off 10 windows or more. AdvancedWindows.com. Affordable windows, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7A forecast has the coldest of the next seven. Today, 38 the high, chance for snow showers. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 46. 
up to 51 with a chance for rain snow showers on Wednesday. Thursday, 46, mostly cloudy skies. We'll drop it back to 41, partly cloudy on Friday. Weekend looks warmer and drier, upper 40s, low 50s. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Still 28 degrees to start the morning and the seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Well, the comeback kids, known as the BYU Cougar men's basketball team, <laughs> did it again. This time they came back from down 17 and won the game against TCU over the weekend. But they are the underdogs as they hit the road to take on number eight, Iowa State. That game coming up on Wednesday night. We will have the uh, pregame for you at 6. And the uh, um, tip-off looks like 7 o'clock. We'll double-check that. But uh, stay with us for Cougar basketball again. Speaking of that, tonight it's Cougar Nation starting at 6 o'clock here on KSL News Radio. We'll look back at that game over the weekend. Our news time is 623. I like daffodils, tulips, the big dinner plate dahlias. I loved being in the garden, but I wasn't going to be able to because I couldn't not only walk, but I couldn't really stand on my foot without being in pain. It was excruciating. So my husband said, let's go to the Good Feet store. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Terry live the life they love without letting their feet get in the way. This nice young man said, I think I can help you. He got the arch support and I was fitted. And I kept walking back and forth across the store and I looked at my husband and burst into tears because it was the first time in a year that I have not had any pain in my foot. I have had no pain since the day I bought him. Now I can do whatever I want. There isn't any place on my property that doesn't have flowers blooming 365 days a year. I still can't believe it. My name is Terry and that's my Good Feet story. See what we can do for you with the free personalized arch support fitting at the Goodfeet Store. Stop by the Goodfeet Store in Farmington, Riverton, or Sandy for a free fitting. Call 1-800-NEW-FEET or visit goodfeet.com. Gillette Heating and Air Conditioning is offering furnace maintenance for 30% off. Call 385-GET-HEAT today to take advantage of this limited time offer. Carrier, turn to the experts. Some things are better together, like burgers and fries, movies and popcorn, and auto and home insurance. At Farm Bureau Financial Services, we'll help you bundle your auto and home coverage in one policy, saving you money. And if a storm hits and both are damaged, you'll pay a single deductible. Find an agent at fbfs.com protect. It's your future. Let's protect it. Farm Bureau Property and Casualty Insurance Company, Western Agricultural Insurance Company. Hercules Credit Union presents Ultimate ID Plus, your ultimate defense against identity theft. Powered by Identity Force, the number one rated identity theft protection provider for consumers. With Ultimate ID Plus, there's daily three bureau credit monitoring. They've got your back 24 7, monitoring your credit across all three major bureaus. No surprises, just peace of mind. Score Tracker, stay on top of your credit score effortlessly. Fully manage restoration. If the worst happens, their team of experts steps in. Remediation and recovery services. Not just about prevention, it's about action. And dark web monitoring. Patrolling the shadowy corners of the internet. Safeguarding your personal information. Ultimate ID Plus isn't just a shield. It's your recovery advocate. Get ahead of identity thieves today. Remember, at Hercules Credit Union, your security is their priority. Ultimate ID Plus, because your peace of mind matters. Learn more at HerculesCU.com. Watching Utah's Money this hour is brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. U.S. national debt is rising by $1 trillion every 100 days. Analysts say the trend has been constant since June. The debt total sits at $34.4 trillion today. More than 61,000 pounds of Trader Joe's steamed chicken soup dumplings are being recalled for possible uh, uh, possibility of containing hard plastic from a permanent marker. No illnesses or injuries have been reported yet. And Krispy Kreme is celebrating the 2024 election by offering two free donuts on Super Tuesday. The donut maker says it wants to encourage voters to hit the polls and stop by for a donut. Your money at this moment, the markets are mixed. The Dow and the S&P down. The Dow is off 129, about three-tenths of a percent. The S&P is down just a tenth. And the Nasdaq still in the green, but uh, not by much. It's up by 11 and a half points. Roads have been good so far. Uh, we've got a little slowing now going from Roy to Clearfield, but then it's back to normal speeds. We'll uh, check all of it with traffic and weather together again next. 
This Monday Tax Tip is brought to you by Susan Spears, CEO of the Utah Association of CPAs. Did you know that you may be missing out on important deductions and credits if you don't correctly claim your dependents on your income taxes? Remember to provide social security numbers for your children or other dependents. If you are divorced, only one parent may claim the child as a dependent. If you both claim the same child as a dependent, the processing of your return will come to a screeching halt while the IRS works with the parties to straighten things out. Work with your CPA to streamline the process. Get the most out of your income tax preparation when you hire a CPA. Go to uacpa.org to find a CPA that's right for you. That's uacpa.org. uacpa.org. Listen to KSL on Monday for more tax tips from the Utah Association of CPAs. The Cougars are fighting for their best chance in the Big Dance. BYU has displayed its resiliency throughout this campaign. Wow. The Big 12 tournament is days away, and then it's the NCAA tournament. This Wednesday, it's BYU, Iowa State. Free game is at 5 and tip off at 6 on Utah's legacy home for the Cougars. KSL News Radio. KSL News Time 629. Traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. How are we looking, Andy? Well, Tim, our freeways are all clear in Salt Lake County, I-15, I-215, and I-80 coming from Tooele. But we've got some heavier traffic along Mountain View and West Jordan going up towards West Valley. Bangor's still holding up okay. Redwood, no extra delays just yet. Heather? No delays in Weber or Davis County, but traffic is definitely filling in, and it might be just falling below the posted speed limit between Ogden and Salt Lake. A lot of that is due to the road conditions. We have some snow falling. It's not uh, piling up a lot, but it is making the roadways just a bit slick, which is why people may be slowing down. You will see that snow sticking in between the lanes of travel where tires aren't reaching. Uh, but overall, right now, you still have a pretty good drive with no accidents reported on US 89 Legacy Parkway and the West Side Belt. Eric. We've got good movement in Utah County this morning. I-15 looks solid from Springville to Point of the Mountain, for instance. That's a 22-minute drive. If you're heading south or southeast out of Utah County, uh, that's when you're going to see uh, road conditions kind of affect your travel. Uh, I-15 down in Nephi, uh, and as well as uh, uh, Spanish Fork uh, Canyon on Highway 6. Once you get out to Soldier Summit heading down to Price, that's where your drive's going to be affected. I-80 through the mountains looking good right now if you're heading out through Parley's Canyon. Common Spirit Hospital clinics and caregivers all connected to advanced health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Healthcare with human kindness is here. Hello, human kindness. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. 38 for a high later, and yes, we're going to get more snow. It may actually uh, get here along the Wasatch Front before we're done with this morning commute at 9. We're expecting sometime in the next hour, the possibility of it anyway. Right now, 28 in Salt Lake City. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 6:30. In our top story this half hour, we've got some patches of snow moving into northern Utah this morning, and the scattered storms could linger for several hours. KSL News Radio's Adam Small begins our live team coverage. Adam. Dan, the silver lining I can provide this morning is that it isn't expected to be nearly as intense as Saturday's storm, though. While we are seeing snow predominantly across the northern end of the Wasatch Front, now actually moving in towards Point of the Mountain, Salt Lake Valley, over the Great Salt Lake and into Davis and Weaver County. Uh, KSL meteorologist Matt Johnson says we could see maybe just a trace to an inch of snow in the valleys, maybe two to five inches at Alta. They could linger into the lunch hour, maybe even the early afternoon. I think by evening hours, it's just mostly cloudy and temperatures topping out in the upper 30s. Overall, in the forecast for the rest of the week, we aren't expected to see much snow, but there is a very slight chance to see snow or rain for the next few days. Reporting live, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Because of that uh, snow over the weekend, the backcountry slopes are risky today. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston continues our live team coverage. Peter. Tim, I'm looking at the online map for the Utah Avalanche Center right now, and it's showing the aftermath of this big storm that just happened this weekend. We're seeing red zones in the Uintas and the Skyline area, meaning it's high risk and somewhere to avoid steep slopes for skiing and snowboarding. Now, avalanches that are bound to be happening there are deep enough to bury somebody. They go between one and three feet deep. As for the rest of the Wasatch Front, it's glowing orange from Provo to Logan, which means it's considerable avalanche danger. The valleys did get some snow, and the Salt Lake Tribune reports that there was wind up to 90 miles an hour on the Great Salt Lake Marina. 
and that was the fastest win that we recorded from the weekend. But for now, reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. The same storm system that blew through Utah over the weekend left hundreds of people stuck on a highway in California. We get that part of the story from ABC's Rhiannon Alley. Rescuers working to reach drivers after the most brutal blizzard of the season swept through the Sierra Nevada mountains, dumping up to 12 feet of snow and packing wind gusts of up to 190 miles per hour. More than 300 vehicles got stuck on Interstate 80. Parts of the highway shut down for days. Officers going car to car. And although this storm has passed, another one is on the way tonight. As much as 10 feet of snow in some of those uh, Sierra Mountain locations, a small avalanche even closed the uh, only road into Tahoe for several hours. Much of uh, northern Utah, including Salt Lake City, hit the conditions for a code blue alert overnight. KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce explains. A code blue alert means temperatures or wind chills below 15 degrees for more than two hours in a 24-hour period. Calling the alert allows shelters to accommodate more homeless people. For the 24 hours, starting at 8 this morning, code blue conditions are expected for much of uh, northeastern Utah, from Cache all the way to Carbon and San Pete counties. Governor Cox is praising the new funding from the legislature to help the homeless population in the state, even though it was less than he originally asked for. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit joins us live. Peter, uh, excuse me, Michael. Tim, what was supposed to be a $193 million budget wound up being only $66.2 million, with nearly 51 of that going towards shelter investments. The rest is divvied to homelessness prevention and behavioral health investments. Now, Governor Cox applauded the final budget, but homeless advocates say if the state can approve $167 million going towards a pathway for a new jazz arena and National Hockey League franchise, then they can also make a comparable investment towards homelessness and housing costs. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. Food pantries are seeing a spike in the number of people they're serving, and many say they're running low on supplies. Glenn Bailey from the Crossroads Urban Center says in January they served nearly 11,000 people, but the year prior it was just over 3,000. This is something that seems to be happening to pantries all over the state, so it's not isolated to Crossroads or to Salt Lake. It seems to be a crisis that's affecting people all over Utah. Bailey believes high housing costs and food costs, as well as the loss of pandemic era benefits, are to blame. They and many other food banks across the state are asking for food donations so they can keep their shelves stocked. Heather Peterson, KSL News Radio. KSL News Time 635. Let's get your first look traffic here with Andy. And we've got traffic running a little bit slow as you head through some wet conditions, especially between Layton and Kaysville right now, going into Weber Canyon on I-84. Parley's Canyon is dry. Big and Little Cottonwood Canyons are both open, but they do have traction device restrictions this morning. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Now our top national stories this hour. The Supreme Court could rule this morning if former President Donald Trump is eligible for the primary ballot in three states. ABC News legal analyst Royal Oaks takes a look. The judicial system can sometimes be maddeningly slow, like you're tap dancing in molasses. But here, the high court is probably eager to announce its ruling on the insurrection issue, so voters making decisions in Super Tuesday primaries and other contests will know the outcome of the Colorado legal fight. The former president was removed from the Illinois, Colorado, and Maine primary ballots. The justices uh, heard Mr. Trump's appeal last month. U.S. Air Force cargo planes dropped food aid into Gaza over the weekend. Former Marine pilot, uh, uh, fighter pilot, Colonel Steve Ganyard says it's an operation that takes a lot of planning. You need to be able to say, we're going to put it here on this beach. We need to know what the winds are in the ground. We need to know how far it's going to drift. So there's actually compensation when you push it out the back to make sure that it doesn't drift into the sea or into, into populated areas. Uh, they probably are coordinating on the ground with, with relief agencies on the ground to make sure people are well back. Uh, But it is a a fairly complex kind of planning operation for those Air Force crews who do this. Some of those drops did land in the sea, and it was really something to see the uh, throngs of people that were running to get them. Uh, More of those MREs will be dropped in the near future. A USU student is raising money for a school project to send floral arrangements to grieving pet owners. Jace Lee Paul says this project, only a few weeks old, has already helped distribute about 35 arrangements to families who have had their pets euthanized. Paul says over the next few months, she wants to work with vets and shelters to help get arrangements out during a difficult time for families. I use proceeds from the GoFundMe to fund the little arrangements that I make. The heading of the GoFundMe page is Paws and Petals 
project. Links can be found up on kslnewsradio.com. Mark Jackson, KSL News Radio. One of our traffic texters this morning tells me it's been touch and go from Ogden southbound. They're in Layton now. And Val, thanks for your note this morning. <laughs> <laughs> reminding us all, if you look at the calendar, that today's a good day to March 4th as we go into a brand new week together. We'll check traffic and weather together next. Utah Super Tuesday Caucus. Democrats, Republicans, here in the state of Utah, everybody can be part of the process. Get action steps for you to caucus Tuesday night, Monday and Tuesday at 135 with Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. A happy place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters, that's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at certapro.com. It already feels like home. Do you hear that? If you're like many people, that's the sound of your money. Just lying there in a checking or savings account doing nothing when it could be out there earning more money for you. But at America First Credit Union, we can give your money a wake-up call. What? What's that? Rise and shine, Bucky. We can get your money working in a high-yield certificate account, earning you a much better return than traditional checking and savings. Up and at them, buddy. We gotta go. Huh? Where are we going? To America First. You'll love it there. They're gonna help you do so much awesome stuff. Mm. All right, all right, I'm coming. So get your money working with a high-yield certificate from America First. Head to AmericaFirst.com today to check out the latest amazing rates. Subject to membership, eligibility, terms, conditions, and change. Federally insured by NCUA. Utah's largest sportsman's expo for the entire family is back. March 21st at Mountain America Expo Center. Get discount coupons at Big O Tires and O'Reilly Auto Parts stores. Visit sportsexpos.com for locations, seminar schedules, and show info. Your life outdoors at the International Sportsman's Expo, March 21st through 24th at Mountain America Expo Center in Sandy. Youth 15 and under, enter free. More info at sportsexpos.com. Tracking another storm that could bring some snow as early as, uh, well, 7 or 8 o'clock this morning uh, for those of you making your drive in. But nothing compared to what we got over the weekend with all those crazy winds. We'll have more on it coming up. Matter of fact, right now, let's uh, check traffic and weather together at 639. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. No sign of it yet, Andy, is there? Uh, not in the Salt Lake Valley. Uh, so far, we've got uh, traffic moving just fine in both directions on dry road conditions. We do have some heavy traffic along Mountain View starting to build up in Daybreak and some in uh, West Valley, but yet to see anything that you should worry about or plan on more than an extra couple of minutes total on your commute if it's anywhere in the Salt Lake Valley. Heather? Well, your commute is still about 30 minutes, give or take a minute or two, from Ogden to downtown Salt Lake on I-15, but you are going to see some damp road conditions and it might be a little bit icy, especially as you get closer to the shoulders, the right and left shoulders, where uh, snow has been falling uh, just recently this morning throughout all of Weber and Davis counties. No accidents reported, though, on city streets or the major freeways like I-15, US-89, and the West Davis Highway. Eric. Seeing a little bit more activity, University Avenue in Provo coming off of the freeway and heading north, uh, but it's not a bad drive uh, from 300 south to 800 north into the BYU campus, at least not this early in the morning. I-15, Utah County, northbound, southbound, looking good right now, and if you're heading out through Provo Canyon, 189 in solid shape going to the Wasatch Back. Big O Tires is your one-stop shop for tires and service. Now through March 17th, buy three, get one free on select sets of tires. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. More than 10 below the normal today. We'll go for 38 for a high. Chance for snow showers. Overnight, 26 clearing skies. Tomorrow, 46 with partly cloudy skies. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, cloudy in Salt Lake City, uh, but below the freezing mark, 28 degrees. Next month, I believe, uh, is the month that uh, our Deseret Management Corporation, which is the parent company of KSL, is getting ready to uh, present the Sterling Scholar Award. We thought it would be good to check in with KSL TV's Danny Wimmer uh, about that and how uh, 
it's been affecting those that have been past winners. So look forward to that coverage coming up in depth. Right now, though, it's time for Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, and it's brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. Scientists tinkering with a strand of ape DNA have made an important discovery. They've identified a gene that gives monkeys their tails. Through evolution, a researcher at NYU says that little wiggly strand of DNA was shut off in human beings, and for that reason, you don't have a tail. The gene is called TBXT, a series of random letters, TBXT, but it could stand for too bad, no tail. The researchers say TBXT mutations give mice short tails, monkeys more substantial ones, and I wonder, now that they've identified the gene long since shut down in humans could they turn it back on because it'd be kind of interesting to have a long curly tail I mean, sure it'd get in the way when you sit down in the car but a tail looping up over your belt <laughs> you could swing from branches oh, it don't don't mean mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. maybe you could use your tail as a broom or if you're talented an extra hand to help with dinner they'd probably sell special tail shampoo or would modesty require that you keep it covered hmm Don't know. Don't have to worry about it because they haven't tried to turn the gene back on. When evolution turned this TBXT gene off, it cut off our tails, but the researchers say it also opened the door for birth defects to the spine. And wouldn't it be wonderful if that was eradicated with a flip of a genetic switch? But at a price, it would also give future generations a tail that we could use to swing or even wag or wiggle. But I worry with the way the world is going. We just use them as selfie sticks. Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, only on KSL News Radio. Not really sure what to do with that exactly, but uh, Jeff will be back this afternoon, <laughs> three o'clock, here on KSL News Radio. Brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. If the IRS is harassing you, let the offices of Jordan Wilcox help. Visit taxhelput.com. Back in 2004, got a letter from the IRS indicating that I was no longer married and therefore they were to change my filing status to single. We were were really upset. I'm Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox. Listen to what actual clients have had to say about working with us. As soon as we met Jordan and he started talking to us, he, number one, he made us feel like we weren't the imbeciles that the IRS had made us feel like for so many years. I'm Jordan Wilcox. Let's solve your IRS tax nightmare. We have reduced our tax liability by over 42 thousand dollars visit taxhelput.com or call 801-657-5951 to schedule your free consultation today we can move forward with confidence and assurance that we're okay that's taxhelput.com it's marvelous just marvelous ksl news time 645 The three things you need to know this hour. First, two people are dead following a workplace shooting in Salt Lake City, and police are still trying to figure out what led up to it all. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, much of northern Utah hit the conditions for a code uh, blue alert last night. Open uh, more space in shelters. And third, traffic and weather together. Freeway slowdowns have been minimal, but we do have a few spots. Late in Kaysville on some wet roads, I-84 and Weber Canyon. Coming over Parley Summit right now, westbound 80 starting to get pretty heavy. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. 38 with a chance for snow showers today, then drier and warmer tomorrow. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 28 in Salt Lake City with a look at our top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. The Supreme Court could be handing down a decision a little later this morning on whether Colorado has the right to remove Donald Trump from the ballot. It could happen today as tomorrow is Super Tuesday and Colorado is one of the 15 states voting. ABC's Rachel Scott has more on that. In the final sprint of the Republican primary, Donald Trump and Nikki Haley bracing themselves for Super Tuesday. Get everyone you know to the polls so we can trounce Haley. This is about do you want more of the same? Or do you want to go in a new direction? With contests in 15 states and one territory voting tomorrow, more than one-third of all GOP delegates will be up for grabs. Nikki Haley did win one primary over the weekend in the District of Columbia. The U.S. has begun airdrops of aid over Gaza as Israel is pressured to move forward with a ceasefire. Apple has been fined almost $2 billion by the European Union for breaching the bloc's antitrust laws in regard to Apple's streaming music service. This is ABC News. 
Let's go in depth now because next month, Deseret Management Corporation, which is the parent company of KSL, will present the prestigious Sterling Scholar Award. KSL TV's Deanie Wimmer reports how one Sterling Scholar has made a difference. Walking to engineering class at the University of Utah, Wyatt Many Goats is far from home. I think in the Navajo sense, like our traditions and our cultures hold us close to our family. It's like hard to break that and hard to get out of that comfort zone. He's sacrificed for education. He left the reservation at 14 to join other Navajo students at Richfield High and live in the dorms. The parents know what quality education Richfield High School has to offer. Plus, we have Snow College. Our students can start earning college credits um, in their junior year. Okay, so we're going to go back five. So I actually graduated from college before high school, which is funny. He was named the KSL Deseret News Sterling Scholar in Science in 2023. He was a perfect example of leadership, service, had great academic goals, and he always worked hard to achieve them. He's the type of person who, who sees the American dream, if you want to put it that way, and he sets goals, and then he just takes his goals and hits them head on. Richfield teachers weren't surprised when he was accepted to Harvard's pre-college program. Talk about far from home. I was freaking out. <laughs> Though he grew up at times with no power, no running water, this Sterling Scholar could have gone to college anywhere he wanted. Well, I got into Harvard and Yale. And you chose the U. Then I chose the U. Smart decision. <laughs> Here in his dorm hangs the sweatshirt of his little nephew. And it serves as a reminder during all these nights of hard work, far from home, that he'll one day return to help his people on the reservation. I think I can make a difference being that one engineer on the reservation. Like, I live on the reservation, and I understand what people are going through, and I have family members that don't have, like, run running water or electricity or even, like, uh, a road to their home. He plans to change that and hopes his path to a degree can eventually be his road home. What an inspiring story. Uh, and to hear that he passed on Harvard and Yale to go to the U also warms my heart this morning. Uh, but it's just an example of what these great Sterling Scholar Awards can uh, shine a, a light on. And we'll look forward to doing it again next month. Our thanks to Deanie, by the way, for sharing this story with us on the In-Depth at 15 and 45. It's uh, 649. Time to check the drive with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Back in the traffic center is Andy Farnsworth. And traffic is uh, running a bit slow on Mountain View now, especially around 3500 South Bangor, 47 South. That intersection's catching some people having to wait. But I-15, no waiting or slowdowns at all from Draper to downtown. If you're going to go to the canyons this morning as we get uh, closer to those resort opening times, Big and Little both open at the moment with uh, chains, four-wheel drive restrictions, but they may uh, be lifting those soon. Heather? Most of our traffic is heading southbound I-15 between Ogden and Salt Lake, but there's not a lot of delay. A uh, smidgen of brake light showing up right now in the Ogden area between 24th and 31st streets. That's where more of the snow is falling right now. You're also seeing a lot of snow uh, falling through Weber Canyon, and it is sticking to the roadways, which is slowing everybody down, both eastbound and westbound between Ogden and Morgan. And then northbound I-15 has a bit of slowing right now as you move from Layton into Clearfield, but I haven't heard of any accidents yet. Eric. I-15 looks fine in Utah County right now. If you're exiting uh, any place uh, between uh, uh, University Avenue in Provo all the way up to Timpanogos Highway, you're not going to have any problems along the way. Uh, we do have a little bit more punching up now, Mountain View Corridor, as it goes north from SR-73 to uh, Redwood Road, but no serious delays thus far. A little bit of westbound slowing up over the top of Parley Summit if you're on I-80 this morning heading from Park City into the valley. With nutrients blended for green or healthier turf in our local soil, IFA's 4-plus lawn care program is the ultimate lawn owner power move. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7-day forecast on the chilly side today. 38 degrees with a chance for snow showers. 46 tomorrow, partly cloudy. We'll then go 51 on Wednesday, yes, warmer, but a chance for some rain snow showers. 46 mostly cloudy for Thursday. Friday, 41, partly cloudy up to the upper 40s and low 50s for both Saturday and Sunday with some sunshine and clouds. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now, 28 degrees in Salt Lake City. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. So tomorrow is uh, Super Tuesday. 
We'll have our coverage until 9 p.m. And look at this lineup. Uh, Jeff Kaplan, Boyd Matheson, Mara Carabello. Uh, other states, of course, besides Utah, Alabama, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Vermont, Virginia, and Alaska. Going to be a busy day tomorrow, and we'll uh, have coverage. I mentioned to you earlier, too, that Boyd uh, is going to be focusing uh, a segment of his show specific to uh, – uh, Super Tuesday, 1.30 today and tomorrow, so look forward to that coverage as well. The best information available on Inside Sources with Boyd every day, 1 to 3 o'clock. KSL News Time now, 6.52. Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. A stranger with a gun fires on two teens, shattering lives. But that's only the beginning of the story. Listen to The Letter at theletterpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts. People think saving money is hard, but really, it's easy. It's as simple as changing a few spending habits. For free tips on how to save the easy way, check out feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, trajanwealth.com. The IRS is coming for high-income taxpayers today. The agency will be sending out at least 125,000 compliance letters to high earners that cheated on their taxes. Tax authorities say they've uh, been cheated out of hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, if you ever wanted IHOP and Applebee's in the same place at the same time, you're in luck. A dining company is looking at launching dual-brand restaurants to the U.S. The CEO says the prototype has seen success in several other counties and uh, that, that shared space and seems to help with efficiency. Japan's Nikkei Index has hit a record high, closing above 40,000 points for the first time ever today. The index has risen more than 20% so far in 2024. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 both hit new highs last week. Your money at this moment will have the opening bell a little more than a half hour away, but the futures this morning headed the wrong way for the Dow anyway. It's off 160 points, which is four-tenths. The S&P is down just nine. The NASDAQ, the only one still clinging to some green numbers right now. It is up by four and a quarter. That uh, southbound patch of I-15 in Davis County, now between Layton and Kaysville, we had one of our earlier traffic texters uh, tell us about that. We'll see if we can find out why and steer you around it with traffic and weather together next. Good morning. I'm the 40% off window company. 40% off? Of what? Hey, 40% off. Yeah, I'll bet it's your biggest sale of the year. This week only, because you need a model home in our neighborhood. Well... Well, nothing. It's baloney. Hi, this is Kathy. The Doug of Window World. When you hear those things, you know you've entered the baloney zone. Resist the force of the baloney zone. Find Window World online at windowworldutah.com. Or call Window World at 281-8111. That's 281-8111. And that's no baloney. You wouldn't try trust a butcher to babysit your pet pig. You wouldn't trust a lumberjack to repair your antiques. Or a professional wrestler to be your massage therapist. So why would you trust anyone but Amco to fix your car? For over 50 years, we've been the trusted experts in transmission repair. Check out Amco's multiple financing options. So you can fix it fast and pay it off slow. 
double A M C O Dave and Debbie. I want our listeners to feel like they have an advocate, that they have somebody that's going to fight for them, challenge the status quo or the pithy soundbite. We have a unique job where we have access to interviews and people that not everyone has. We take that seriously. So if we do feel like we're getting a spin, then we can challenge it. I love it when people tell me, I was just thinking about that question that you asked. I'm glad you asked that question. That's like the height of compliment. I want our listeners to feel empowered to use the information that they've learned on the David Dujanovic show to help their families to help make good decisions, help investigate other avenues to maybe protect their family's safety or protect their family's money. I'm hopeful our show leaves our listeners with a sense of empowerment so they can make the best decision possible for themselves and for their families. Listen for Dave and Dejanovic 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. At KSL News Radio, we have a 30-year legacy of honoring Utah teachers. But we can't do it without your help. Please tell us about an important teacher in your life on the KSL Teacher Tribute Wall, presented by Cypress Credit Union. Each month, one lucky teacher wins a $500 gift card from Cypress Credit Union, a $250 gift card to Harmons, plus season tickets to Hale Center Theater. Say thanks to your teacher today at kslnewsradio.com slash teacher from Cypress Credit Union and KSL News Radio. KSL News Time 659, traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. How are we looking, Andy? I'll tell you, it's getting a lot heavier now in traffic in Erda, Stansbury Park, and Lake Point on SR36. Pretty consistently reduced speeds through that stretch. Although once you're on I-80, it looks like you're at the full speed limit all the way over into the valley. No problems on I-15 through the valley so far this morning between Draper and Salt Lake. Heather? Well, the worst road conditions that we have up through Weber and Davis County is actually going through Weber Canyon right now. I-84 is pretty snow-covered between Mountain Green and Ogden, although plows have gone through a couple of times, but the snow is falling um, fairly quickly at the moment. Southbound I-15, you will have some wet spots on the roadways between Ogden and downtown Salt Lake, but not enough to really cause any delays at the moment and no accidents on Legacy Parkway or the West Side Belt. Eric. I-80 out to the mountains if you're eastbound. It uh, looks pretty good through Parley's Canyon. Westbound, we have a little bit of slowing coming up uh, over the top of Parley Summit going into Lambs Canyon. That's probably just an isolated couple of vehicles there. And if you're getting down into Park City right now, exiting I-80 at two on 224 uh, southbound there. Westbound Kearns Boulevard from US-40 into town. That's all in good shape. And I-15, Utah County is looking good. Now it's starting to get busy. Mountain View Corridor drivers heading east coming upon the Redwood Road intersection. I'm Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. 30% chance of showers is going to linger all the way through Thursday of this week and we gradually warm into the lower 50s by Wednesday. Right now it's 30 in Salt Lake City. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. We should tell you just a little bit of snowfall now starting uh, in uh, the Tooele area, Stansbury Parkway. It's 7 o'clock on Utah's Morning News. Good morning. I'm Tim Hughes and our top story on the 7 o'clock report. Two people are dead after a shooting at a Salt Lake City business over the weekend and police are trying to figure out why. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is following that story and joins me live. Adam? Tim, police say the first 911 call came through around 2.30 yesterday from an employee here at Varex Imaging near 1700 South and 2700 West. So Lake City Police spokesperson Brent Weisberg says when officers arrived, two people were already dead. One of the victims was found outside and the other was found inside. The person who was found outside, our officers located a firearm near that individual. Now, a company spokesperson later told KSL in a statement the alleged shooter was one of the two people killed. Weisberg says they are still trying to figure out the motive and more of what led up to the shooting. They have brought in social workers and other victim advocates for the other employees that were on site during this workplace shooting. Live at the scene, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. A teenager shot in a McDonald's parking lot this weekend remains in critical condition in the hospital. It happened Saturday night at the McDonald's along 45th South in Murray. Police say the victim and others were sitting in a car when the gun went off. Police are still trying to piece together exactly what happened. Well, the stage is set for Super Tuesday tomorrow. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with more. Peter? 
Tim, like you said, it's primary election eve, but many Utah voters aren't actually going to be making their pick for the White House. And part of the reason is because Republicans are going to have to physically show up to a local school, church, or home to vote for their chosen nominee. Only registered Republicans can go to those events. Now, Democrats are going to be doing it differently. They're going to have to mail in their ballots to choose President Joe Biden, challenger Dean Phillips, or one of a number of other challengers. <clears throat> you can still show up to their caucus, but unlike the Republicans, you'll only be casting a vote for a delegate who will represent you at the Democratic National Convention in August. For more information about this, check out our article on kslnewsradio.com. Reporting live from Salt Lake City, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Former President Trump won most of the Republican primaries over the weekend, with the exception of one. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Nikki Haley is celebrating her first victory of the 2024 campaign, winning the Republican primary in Washington, D.C., making her the first woman to ever win a Republican presidential primary. Washington is one of the most heavily Democratic jurisdictions in the country, with only about 23,000 registered Republicans. Shortly after Haley's win, former President Trump responded, dubbing Haley the Queen of the Swamp. Trump is likely to pick up several hundred delegates on Super Tuesday tomorrow when voters in 15 states head to the polls. Haley has vowed to stay in the race until at least Super Tuesday. The former chief financial officer of the Trump Organization is expected to plead guilty to perjury charges today. Alan Weiselberg arrived at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office early this morning. He is expected to enter that plea later in the afternoon. KSL weather now with Matt Johnson. The weekend storm was pretty crazy and hit some areas with a lot of snow. Pacing with 8 inches and even Elk Ridge and Woodland Hills with 12 inches. Loa, 7. Kaysville, 6. Salt Lake City with 5 inches. Tooele, 5. Cedar City, 4. And Hiram up in Cache Valley with 4 inches. And the mountains saw anywhere from 1 to almost 2 feet of snow. It was quite the storm. We will continue to see scattered showers today and throughout the week. As a matter of fact, texters telling us snowing right now in South Salt Lake, also in Bountiful lightly, and uh, as we told you to start the hour, some snow on the cameras, the UDOT cameras out in the Tooele County area. Utah Ski Resort's got a healthy dose of fresh snow this weekend. Snowbird says they got around 14 inches between the time they closed on Saturday and opened on Sunday. Park City got 18. It's uh, in just the last uh, 24 hours. Highway Patrol troopers had a busy weekend dealing with a lot of crashes, as you might imagine. The UHP says they handled 138 of them on Utah roads yesterday, more than 300 between Friday night and Saturday. We're approaching peak pothole season, too. Road maintenance crews have been using temporary solutions while the weather has been cold. There is a more permanent fix that we can place when the weather when the weather's a little bit warmer. UDOT's John Gleason says the freeze-thaw cycle speeds up the creation of potholes because water seeps into cracks in the road and then it freezes. Green lights are lasting a little longer in parts of northern Utah County to help ease traffic congestion. KSL News Radio's Emma Keddington has more. The Utah Department of Transportation is extending the length of green lights on major commuter roads in Lehigh. These roads are 2100 North, Pioneer Crossing, and Redwood Road. This is meant to ease traffic for an area that's experienced major growth. More than 60,000 people have moved into the area in the last three years. Right now, the lights will be extended for the evening commute, but by March 12th, UDOT plans to do the same for the morning commute. Let's check that morning commute right now with first look traffic on the 7 o'clock report. Here comes, Andy. And, yep, it's snowing over in Tooele County, starting to affect I-80, Lake Point, SR-36 through Stansbury Park and Lake Point. So far, the valley is still dry, I-15 in Salt Lake County. Davis and Weber still has some wet conditions coming south, although the only slowing I'm seeing is near 21st Street in Ogden. Uh, and then going into the canyons, Big and Little now open without restriction. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL News Time 706. A, a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has died in New Jersey f uh, from some kind of a medical problem. A spokesperson for the church says that Elder Mac Jared Chapel uh, became unresponsive over the weekend, could not be revived. The 19-year-old was from Sugar City, Idaho. It's unclear what that medical emergency was. Two women in Goshen are facing criminal charges for falsely claiming that the mayor was involved with uh, child human trafficking. Police say the women were harassing the mayor, demanding $1 million to stop the claims. 
They reportedly published letters with the claims and even put up posters around town claiming the area was deep in uh, child trafficking. Hundreds of Utah National Guard troops are headed to Africa, the unit, unit's largest deployment in over a decade. The nearly 300 soldiers will be gone for a year based uh, out of Djibouti and working multiple jobs in operations, communications, logistics, and maneuver support. A Massachusetts Air National Guardsman accused of leaking classified military documents will appear in court today. 22-year-old Jack Teixeira had been facing six counts of willful retention and transmission of national defense information. Each count carries a sentence of up to 10 years in prison. The documents Teixeira is accused of leaking included sensitive information about the war in Ukraine, and they were discovered last April on Discord, a gaming-focused social media platform. Teixeira is expected to plead guilty. That report, by the way, from ABC's Mike Dubusky. Educators at Highland High School have created the district's first step team. It began with Miss Tiffany Rasmussen, a lifelong Utah, 10-year veteran teacher and black student union advisor who listened. Black students come to me and say, look, we're not making the cheer team, we're not making the dance team. We really feel like we don't have a voice here and we're not seen. With the full support of BSU co-chair Deirdre Strait, whose own kids once roamed those halls, and coaches Christine Slade and Chris McKinley, who donate their own time, brought Step back to Utah. Last seen in the 90s in the Ogden district. It's just been a real privilege to be a part of seeing these kids participate and grow and gain confidence and explore their heritage and explore different cultures as well. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. Just into the uh, newsroom, JetBlue Airways says it's giving up its push to buy out Spirit Airlines. The deal was valued at $3.8 billion. JetBlue has faced strong opposition with antitrust regulators who say that deal would stifle competition. Four people will arrive at the International Space Station after a SpaceX launch last night. Three astronauts and a Russian cosmonaut in a SpaceX rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Two, one, ignition, engines full power, and liftoff of NASA Crew 8. Go Falcon, go SpaceX, and go NASA. Headed to the International Space Station, technicians closing the hatch discovered a hairline crack in the seal. They examined photos of it and apparently determined no problem with the heat of re-entry when Dragon comes home in six months. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. 709 Traffic and Weather Together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. All right, now we move back to winter, at least for a little while here, Andy. And right now, if you're on I-15, that northbound drive is all clear. But if you're coming out of Tooele, I-80 beginning to get uh, snowed on, and so a little bit of slushy conditions increasing on SR-36 and I-80. But as you come into the valley, at least for now, the storm stops. And by the time you hit the airport, at least for now, uh, the roads are still pretty dry. Uh, SR-201, just a little bit heavy going through the Magna stretch right now, especially near 8400 West. Heather? The snow continues to fall in Weber Canyon. This is uh, sticking to the roadway now, so things are very slick. Traffic definitely under the speed limit between Morgan and Ogden, both directions. Southbound I-15, not a lot of snow has stuck to the roadways, but some areas may be a bit damp. And if it's below freezing, you might have some icy spots. Just use a bit of caution, southbound 15 from Ogden to Salt Lake City. Traffic is filling in, and we might start seeing some brake lights pretty soon. Eric. 2100 North and Lehigh starting to see your usual congestion both at the Redwood Road intersection for eastbounders and further up the line uh, between 2300 West and the freeway. That's the busiest spot in Utah County right now. If you're on the freeway, you're looking at a 30-minute drive from Santa Quin up to Point of the Mountain and going into the mountains. Uh, Provo Canyon looks good on 189 Spanish Fork. Uh, Canyon is good for uh, quite a while uh, when you get to Soldier Summit heading down to Price. That's when the uh, weather is going to affect your drive. You're going to see some delays there. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL hourly forecast. We start the morning out at 7 a.m. with temperatures in the 20s and a couple of snow showers possible. Better chance for snow showers into the noon hour. Temps in the mid 30s. And by this afternoon, we should be drying out. Topping out with a high of 38 today, more than 10 below the normal. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Light snow starting to fall downtown, too. It's uh, 30 degrees this hour.
Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll take a look at some of the other stories a, a bit off the beaten path. One of them talking about the problem with obesity in the world today, and the numbers are staggering at the number of people that are struggling right now. An Iowa basketball star made college basketball history on Sunday. This is such a great story. Caitlin Clark, now the leading scorer in NCAA Division I basketball when she passed Pistol Pete Maravich. This for college basketball history. Some of the uh, tickets for Iowa games we were reading last week uh, were going for over $500. People wanted to be there so badly. Uh, That was the call, by the way, on Fox Sports. This was Clark's last regular season home game after announcing she's entering the WNBA draft, but she can still run up her record number uh, in the postseason. The price of a ticket, as we mentioned, well, last week was $500. (laughs) It was $600 a pop to get in there last night. When the Utah Jazz host the Washington Wizards tonight, they'll be doing it without forward Larry Markinen. The Jazz uh, star hurt his leg during the loss to Miami on Saturday. Sunday, the team said he will be out with a right quadriceps contusion. Walter Kessler, uh, Walker Kessler, rather, will also sit this one out with a sprained right foot. And a big win for Real Salt Lake in their snowy home opener this weekend. The coach of uh, LAFC was not happy that they had to play their game in these kinds of conditions. It was crazy. Weather postponed the kickoff, but eventually RSL picked up a 3-0 win over LAFC during the uh, middle of that snowstorm. And afterwards, there were fans that were out making snow angels <laughs> on the field. I don't know if you saw that part of the story. March roared in like a lion on the college basketball courts with a wild weekend of college hoops action. The Cougs have done it. The comeback Cougs have done it. The Big 12 Conference would have nine teams in the men's NCAA tournament if the latest version of ESPN's bracketology holds headed into the last week of the regular season. And Big 12 newcomer BYU is getting a lot of buzz. 21 for Foose. A game-high 21, now also a 20. It came from a lot of places. What a win! BYU moves up in the latest predictions to a five seed. Utah State is in with a respectable seven. Utah currently on the bubble, but of course none of it is set in stone until Selection Sunday. Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. A couple from Highland hopes to prove their skills in a renovation reality show. We get that story from KSL News Radio's Michael Commit, who joins me live. Michael? Tim, Jeremy, and Jessica Rock found themselves on Cabin Wars, Flip It to Win It, just weeks before their first wedding anniversary. They were given a month and 20 grand to flip a tiny cabin down in New Orleans. Thing is, the Rocks were the youngest competitors, and neither of them are contractors, so the odds weren't really with them. There's been a couple days there where it wasn't feeling too awesome. You've just been pushing yourself you super get it hard. So. Thing is, they made things work. They worked up to 15 hours at a time, but now they have a shot at, get, at getting the $40,000 season prize. We'll see what happens later on when this streams in April. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. Trending this hour on the 7 o'clock report, daylight savings time. Social media buzzing with complaints about the upcoming spring forward clock change next weekend. People have strong opinions about whether they prefer standard time or daylight savings. Uh, Here in Utah, we have a trigger law in place. If Congress ever decides to allow it, Utah could switch permanently to daylight saving time and never switch the clocks again. Dune 2 is also trending. I see possible futures all at once. And in so many futures, our enemies... I got excited just hearing Andy talk about it last week, but boy, there is quite a buzz around this. The uh, sequel brought in $81.5 million in its opening weekend, a much-needed shot in the arm for box offices. It's the best opening weekend for any film since Taylor Swift's Eras Tour hit theaters last fall. KSL News Time, 715. The three things you need to know this hour. First, two people are dead following a workplace shooting in Salt Lake City, and police are still trying to figure out what led up to it all. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, green lights are lasting a little longer in parts of northern Utah County. Utah is uh, adjusting those lights to help ease traffic congestion. Third, let's see how congested it is this hour with traffic and weather together. Well, it's getting worse in Tooele where the snow's starting to stick to the roads, especially Lake Point where it merges and then the stretch between Grantsville and Lake Point. 
Uh, we've also had issues with wet roads slowing you down. Ogden into uh, Roy now and some stop and go coming south on Highway 89 from I-84 down towards SR-193 in Layton. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Cold with snow showers today, high of only 38. I'm Matt Johnson. Snowing just lightly downtown now in 30 degrees with our top national story. From ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. About an hour from now, the Supreme Court is expected to hand down at least one decision, and it could be the one involving Colorado's attempt to get Donald Trump kicked off the ballot in that state. ABC's Rachel Scott has more on this on the eve of the biggest primary day yet, Super Tuesday. Colorado will be one of the states that is voting on Super Tuesday. You may remember that the state Supreme Court ruled that Donald Trump should be kicked off of the ballot because of his actions on January 6th. Well, that challenge has made its way all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, which could issue a decision in just a matter of hours. Regardless, Trump's name will still appear on that ballot, but it's unclear if the votes will count. Nikki Haley winning her first primary over the weekend in the District of Columbia. A multi-billion dollar fine for a multi-trillion dollar company. Antitrust regulators at the European Union have fined Apple the equivalent of about $2 billion. It stems from a 2020 complaint filed by Spotify, the music streaming app, which took issue with the tech giant's rules against advertising cheaper subscription deals which were available outside side of Apple's App Store. In a press release, the EU Commission says Apple abused its dominant market position, creating unfair trading conditions, which is illegal under EU antitrust rules. Mike Dubusky, ABC News. Another winter storm headed for California's Sierra Nevada mountains. Even as they dig out from seven feet of snow following a weekend blizzard, I-80 still shut down. Over hundreds of cars got stuck. Snow in Texas late last week helped fight panhandle wildfires, but now dry conditions have returned. The battle is being waged on the ground and from above. Air tankers, both helicopter and fixed-wing aircraft, are being loaded with fire retardant or are scooping water up out of area lakes and dumping it onto the flames. Still, the largest of the blazes, the Smokehouse Creek Fire, is far from under control and has burned an area the size of Rhode Island. That's ABC's Jim Ryan in Dallas. You're listening to ABC News. Some of the stories we're following this morning, a third of Utah hospitals are not complying with price transparency laws. That according to a new report. Hospitals have been required to post a list of their prices for services since 2021. But Cynthia Fisher from PatientRightsAdvocate.org shows only a third of the hospitals they looked at across the country are in compliance. When we can see prices, then it shifts the power to patients to be well informed up front about their health care decisions and their financial decisions. Intermountain Health and Common Spirit Health are among among those who have their prices listed as required, but HCA Healthcare is reportedly still on the naughty list. Heather Peterson, KSL News Radio. A new report in the journal Lancet says that obesity is now the most common form of malnutrition in the world. There are an estimated 1 billion people of all ages who are considered obese. One of the uh, study's authors says that wasn't supposed to happen until the year 2030. They called the undernutrition and obesity two faces of the same problem a lack of access to healthy food. Speaking of healthy food, your yogurt snack could feature a new claim on the label in the future. The FDA cleared the way for Danone to uh, say that dairy-based yogurt can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. The company asked for approval to make the claim starting six years ago based on limited studies. On its website, the FDA said that uh, dairy companies will be able to claim that eating yogurt on a regular basis may reduce the risk but it encouraged companies to carefully consider whether to make that claim on yogurts with high amounts of added sugars. KSL News Time now, 719. Traffic and weather together is brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Snowing in some places, Andy, but it looks like these might be quick hit storms. Yeah, and uh, it's hitting pretty hard at the moment, especially in Tooele County. The uh, visibility is dropping quickly as the snow starts sticking to the roads. Both SR-36 and I-80 are backing up as they come together. Uh, it does look like the snow breaks as you come into the Salt Lake Valley, though. 201 and I-80 not seeing any slow spots near the airport. Uh, but Mountain View uh, still slow in the West Valley stretch going down the hill towards 3500 South. Heather? We've got a crash in Davis County. This is on US 89 southbound just before you get to the SR 193 turnoff in Layton. You've got the left shoulder blocked and snow plows are trying to get through to the right. And all of this is causing delays almost back to the I-84 split in South Weber. Now I-15 has more of your traffic. You are definitely seeing slowdowns now from 31st Street in Ogden down into Royal 
enjoy. Part of that is due to construction, and then you've got weather on top of it. Now, once you get into the Clearfield area, you'll pick up speed just a bit all the way into Salt Lake City. Eric. Looking good on the 215 East Belt, uh, rolling from 6200 South past Mount Olympus up to the mouth of Parley's Canyon. Going into Parley's Canyon, I-80 right now, weather not affecting the drive. If you're exiting at Kimball Junction, southbound 224 is getting busy and a little bit slow, as is westbound on Kearns Boulevard from US-40 into town. I-15 Utah County, no problems now from Provo to Lehigh. Is it winter? Is it spring? Who cares? Come explore Logan. Catch the Cache Valley Cowboy Rendezvous. March 14th through the 17th with big name Western music, cowboy poetry, and dances. ExploreLogan.com. Eric Butler on the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 8 forecast has the coldest of the next seven. Today, 38 the high, chance for snow showers. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 46, up to 51 with a chance for rain snow showers on Wednesday. Thursday, 46, mostly cloudy skies. We'll drop it back to 41, partly cloudy on Friday. Weekend looks warmer and drier, upper 40s, low 50s. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. There was some cold air over the weekend. Uh, yesterday, we were going to head up skiing, and then we noticed that winds were going to be like 40 mile an hour gust on some of the peaks, and the uh, wind chill was going to be below freezing. Well, actually, below zero, like negative nine in some cases. Park City's cold this morning. It's 14 there, Logan 21. Ogden 24, Provo 26, and in Salt Lake City, it's 30 degrees. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. One more story I wanted to make sure we uh, get. It's an important one that the CDC has ended its five-day COVID-19 isolation recommendation. ABC News contributor Dr. John Brownstein says the change reflects progress against COVID-19 and other respiratory infections. Of course, if you have someone that is elderly or immunocompromised, you want to be especially sure not to, to spread infection to those people. So in that case, you would still try to, to prevent any exposure uh, over a five-day period. You'd obviously want to be sure that you're wearing a mask. The CDC now says anyone with a confirmed case of COVID-19 should stay at home and away from others for at least 24 hours. We'll check Money News next. This is Derek Miller speaking on business. Utah is a hub for innovators, entrepreneurs, and businesses, each with unique needs. That's why Offbeat Productions, a Park City-based promotional product company, is committed to offering creative branding solutions for businesses of all sizes. Owner Shannon Nellis joins us with more. Offbeat Productions started out printing t-shirts for rock bands and record companies in the late 80s. Today, we're a lot more than just t-shirts. You name it, and we can put a logo on it. We create high-impact promos that attract attention and business. Our customers range in size from large companies like Adobe and Warner Music to local Utah schools and sports teams. No matter the size of the job, your project means something to us and we stand behind it. Whether you're ordering 50 shirts for your team or 50,000 for a major event. Plus, at Offbeat Productions, there are so many possibilities for branded items beyond your traditional options. I always recommend putting your brand on something people will keep and use many times over, such as drinkware or bags. To view all of our offerings, visit offbeatproductions.com. No matter your business's promotional needs, Offbeat Productions has a solution for you. Learn more at their website. I'm Derek Miller with the Salt Lake Chamber, speaking on business. Attorney Joe Cordell. Business owners and professionals face special challenges in divorce court. In addition to everything else going on, they have to contend with allegations that they are earning more than they are, coupled with claims on their business or practice itself. Clients with assets depend on their divorce lawyer skills in these matters, and that's why it's so important to hire someone that has those skills. Offices in Midvale and Clearfield, 1412 South Legend Hills Drive, Suite 200, Clearfield, Utah, 84015. Online at CordellCordell.com. In business, service is everything. Cintas delivers what you need to better serve your customers. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, tested and inspected fire protection systems, first aid and safety supplies, on-site AED training, or mops and restroom products stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together. So visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. 
45 days and it's over. Lawmakers passed hundreds of bills. This week, we'll give you the five biggest bills that either passed or failed, starting with the stadiums. Major League Baseball, NHL, NBA. I'll tell you which one I think is inevitable. Today on Dave and Dujanovic. All right, Ron, watching Utah's money now is brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Chicago and Houston being called the most financially distressed cities in the U.S. A Wallet Hub analysis took at the uh, took a look at the number of bankruptcy filings, credit scores, and accounts in forbearance, determining that the cities with the most people worried they are the cities with the uh, most people worried about money. Real estate developers are seeing uh, are, and noticing a new population within millennials and empty nesters, dubbing them forever renters. They are choosing to rent instead of buy, mostly because of the lack of small starter homes. Bigger and newer apartments are becoming ideal for their location and ease. Just ahead of the bell, the market's uh, pushing farther into the red now. The uh, Dow Jones Industrial is off 205, which is half a percent. The S&P is down about 12, the NASDAQ off 3.5. Snow may be hampering your drive in some places. Certainly some wet roads about to greet you. We'll check your traffic and weather together coming up next. Let me take just a minute to uh, talk to you more about the Stern team. You've heard Amanda's experience with uh, working with the Stern team and their fantastic agents uh, that will explain to you the pitfalls uh, of all of the details in selling a home these days. There are 100 of them that you need to pay attention to, and most of them, I'll be honest, I didn't even know about until we started uh, working with the great Stern team. The average agent, and here's the other thing, they market your home. They don't just represent you. They will market your home. The average agent spends a few hundred dollars a month. The Stern team $35,000 on marketing each month to get your home sold fast and for the most money possible. And here's what I love about the Stern team. They know that every single situation is a unique one, and so it's tailored for you. And they have lots of different options, instant cash offers, buy-before-you-sell program. They even have flexible fees. And look, they also understand that life happens, so if needed, they'll let you out of a contract at any time. Find out more by going to thesternteam.com or just Google the Stern Team. Tomorrow's vote may seal the race for president. The two major parties in Utah are taking opposite approaches. Democrats will have a primary election. The United Utah Party and American Independent Party will also be having their caucuses. It all begins by showing up. Caucus night is the opportunity to do that. Super Tuesday. 16 states and territories vote and more than a thousand delegates are awarded. Listen for special coverage today and tomorrow. Plus, get analysis and reaction all day Wednesday. Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus on KSL News Radio. 729 traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. How we doing, Andy? We got a lot of slow spots, Tim. I-80 and SR-36 are backed up. We got a crash or something. Maybe went off the road, maybe where Lake Point on-ramp merges onto the freeway. So the right lane is blocked. Everyone's having to merge in the heavy snowfall. It's not going very well, as you can imagine. Got some slowdowns. 201 freeway now, 7200 West. Mountain View getting really slow in West Valley, but I-15, at least for now, still at the full speed limit between Draper and downtown. Heather? Traffic is stopped right now. Northbound I-15 in Ogden. This is due to a crash, multi-vehicle crash that had been blocking both sides of the freeway right near 31st Street. Now, they stopped everybody to get the cars that were on the left side of the freeway over to the right. You still have a right lane and shoulder blocked, so it looks like UHP is about to let traffic go through again, but traffic definitely backing up, and it's very slow southbound I-15 between 31st Street and I-84. That is due to the heavy snow coming down and blanketing the roadways. Eric? We don't have issues like that in Utah County. Right now, I-15 is a steady stream from Spanish Fork and Springville all the way up to Thanksgiving Point. It is getting a little bit busy. Mountain View Corridor right as uh, that turns into 2100 North over at Redwood Road and on SR-70 you do have some eastbound westbound slowing in uh, eagle mountain itself uh, uh, this would be uh, just uh, west excuse me just east of the canyon wash drive uh, a couple blocks east of there that's where uh, the source of the problem is if you're out into the mountains this morning i uh, you i 80 excuse me through parley's canyon does look pretty good right now going out to park city when you choose Performance Automotive and Bountiful, you're choosing selection. Four locations, Performance Ford Lincoln, Performance Honda, Performance Toyota, and Truck Country. 
See it all at performancebountiful.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Snow will continue through the early part of the day today. We'll eventually reach a high of 38, and right now it's 30 downtown. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 7:30, and our top story is the weather. Snow falling in some areas along the Wasatch Front this morning, and more is on its way. KSL News Radio's Adam Small starts off our live team coverage. Adam. Tim, the good news is we've already seen the bulk of this storm, but KSL meteorologist Matt Johnson says a low pressure system is keeping the jet stream open for snow potentially into this afternoon. How much snow are we talking about? Hey, maybe a trace to an inch for the valley with the snow showers we're expecting today. There's also a couple of snow showers from Fillmore north and east to the Book Cliff Mountains, and that's really about it. You're noticing Alta maybe two to five inches. Now, in the KSL Vortex right now, we're seeing snow hitting most of the Wasatch Front from Tooele, the Salt Lake Valley, up through Davis and Weaver County here in western Salt Lake City. Thankfully, though, it's just flurries for right now, and the roads are pretty drivable. But Matt says the storm should taper off by later tonight at the latest, but there is still a slight chance of rain or snow uh, through Thursday. Now, this series of storms that hit the state over the weekend has avalanche danger on the rise. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is following that part of our coverage. Peter? Yeah, Adam, I actually just got off the phone with Utah Avalanche Center forecaster Craig Gordon, and he's saying that there's a moderate to considerable avalanche risk all along the Wasatch Front. But that's not something to sneeze at because each level, he says, goes up in danger exponentially. A moderate danger level two means that human triggered avalanches are possible. We get into the considerable danger and then they're likely and any avalanche that we trigger could actually break one to three feet deep. You know, it could be a couple hundred feet wide. For context, one to three feet deep is enough to bury you. Gordon tells me it's high danger in the skyline area, and he says that things are moderating out, but he has a word of caution. But remember, we've got to do that on the mountains terms. Reporting live from Salt Lake City, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. Adam, if we still have you uh, as wild as it was here, we weren't the only ones that suffered from this storm, were we? Yeah, absolutely not, Tim. This storm absolutely slammed parts of California. We've been talking about it for uh, the last several days now. ABC's Rihanna Nally has actually been checking in with some stranded drivers. Rescuers working to reach drivers after the most brutal blizzard of the season swept through the Sierra Nevada mountains, dumping up to 12 feet of snow and packing wind gusts of up to 190 miles per hour. More than 300 vehicles got stuck on Interstate 80. Parts of the highway shut down for days. Officers going car to car. And although this storm has passed, another one is on the way tonight. And remember, be sure as always, stay with KSL News Radio for the very latest on this storm and all of your traffic and weather coverage uh, here throughout the week. Live in Salt Lake City, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Here in northern Utah, homeless shelters were allowed to house more people overnight because of a code blue alert. Overnight, the forecast called for temperatures or wind chills to drop below 15 degrees for at least two hours over a 24 hour period. So, Salt Lake County was one of many where authorities issued a code blue alert freeing up homeless shelters to house more people and for local officials to open more emergency beds. Later today, there's already a code blue alert in place for Cache, Carbon, Duchesne, Morgan, San Pete, Summit, Uinta, and Wasatch counties. Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. Governor Cox is praising a new homeless funding package, even though the final amount is well beneath the proposed budget. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit is live with that story. Michael? Tim, the governor initially hoped for a $193 million budget to help the homeless. Instead, the legislature approved only $66.2 million on Friday. With only that fraction, some are calling the package an underwear and socks budget. You see, the plan was 130 of that $193 million was supposed to go to emergency sheltering, with the rest divvied between other services like homelessness prevention and first-time home buying. Still, Governor Cox applauded the final budget, saying it will, quote, keep all Utahns safe and improve our cities, counties, and businesses, close quote. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. First look traffic, let's go back over to Andy Farnsworth. Well, it's really bad in a few spots. We've got I-15 in Ogden near 21st Street, uh, both back to 24th Street, pardon me, backed up in both directions northbound because they blocked off the lanes for a little bit. Highway 89 backed up southbound coming into Layton from I-84 because of a crash. And it looks, well, it looks like a crash where Lake Point merges onto I-80, SR-36. 
Uh, we've got delays more on SR 36 than I 80, but both are backed up in the heavy snow. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Food pantries in Utah are struggling to keep up with demand. KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson explains. Crossroads Urban Center says they're seeing twice as many people visiting their food pantries as they did last year. They cite the high price of housing and food right now as the top reasons people come to them for help. And they're asking for donations so they can continue to serve people who are struggling to make ends meet. Crossroads, by the way, isn't the only food pantry in need. Food banks all across Utah are struggling to keep up with the demand. Our top national story this hour, the Supreme Court could announce, uh, well, could happen within the hour here if President, uh, former President Donald Trump is eligible to be on the ballot in three state primaries. ABC News legal analyst Royal Oaks has more. The expectation is that the high court will issue its opinion in the Colorado case that found Trump was barred from the ballot as an insurrectionist. The timing makes sense because as a huge number of citizens go to the polls the next day to vote in several Super Tuesday primaries, the Supreme Court likely wants the electorate to be aware of its decision. The former president was also removed from the primary in Michigan and Illinois. And U.S. military planes began dropping food aid into Gaza over over the weekend. ABC's Steve Ganyard has more. Part of the Air Force crew's mission is being able to airdrop supplies. So in this case, uh, it's not U.S. forces. Uh, obviously, they're close to the ground, and so you need a permissive environment where people aren't shooting at you. Uh, presumably, none of, of Hamas would be shooting at the U.S. while they were trying to deliver this aid. But the whole idea here is that it's a mission that's fairly routine and that the U.S. Air Force cargo crews practice it and they've got technologies that make it uh, quite precise. The video was really something to see not just all of that uh, parachuting down to the beaches, some of it landing in the ocean, but the number of people chasing after it. About 38,000 meals, we are told, were dropped and more are planned. Northbound and southbound slowing now. I-15 in Ogden as well as northbound delays on SR-36 coming up uh, to I-80 in Tooele County. We'll check traffic and weather together next. A legacy of news and information going back generations. I'll have the radio on. I learned that from my mom. She's listened to KSL her whole life, and I grew up listening to KSL radio, too. I really enjoy listening in the morning. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. Hi, friends. Dan the Laptop Man here from PC Laptops. I get a lot of emails with feedback from customers. Here's one. Dear Dan, I just had the best experience ever. I bought a computer from Shane at your State Street store. I asked several what I thought were really stupid questions. Shane was super courteous and made me feel comfortable through the whole process. People need to understand how important it is to support a local company, especially when your experience is so good. PC Laptops really does love me. Signed, satisfied. I love hearing feedback like that. It really just gives me the chills. It's the whole reason why I got into the computer business in the first place. You can get a brand new PC Laptops desktop, and they start at only $29 a month. And it comes with a lifetime warranty. That means if anything goes wrong, we're going to take care of you. Just check us out at PCLaptops.com. That's PCLaptops.com. At PC Laptops, we really do love you. Believe it or not, most small businesses don't have a 401k. If you don't have a 401k, you are missing out on the greatest wealth creation tool ever created. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and many 401ks are overpriced for the employer, have expensive and underperforming investment options, and have tedious administrative provisions. Not at Trajan Wealth. We can set up a 401k for a company for only 8 bucks per employee, a $65 per plan fee, plus a small advisory fee. That's right, not thousands or even the tens of thousands you've been quoted and do it all in less time than it takes to sit in traffic if you have five or more employees these 401ks will help you attract and retain top talent and if you're an employee and don't have a 401k tell your boss call trajan wealth today call 801-899-7600 that's 801-899-7600 services offered through a third-party partner 739 Traffic and Weather Together is brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Back to Andy Farnsworth. Tim, we've got a lot of slow spots right now. The snow affecting the drive out of Tooele County, as is a crash right where Lake, uh, uh, Lake Point SR36 merges onto the freeway. And the snow has left a pretty, pretty slick conditions, trying to go, uh, people having to drive through it to merge together. And uh, with all that, we've got delays on SR36 actually stretch all the way through Lake Point and almost back into uh, Stansbury Park. 
Uh, plus, you've got uh, slowdowns on I-80 increasing now in the long stretch from Saltaire to the airport. Mountain View and Bangor are both seeing delays at the intersection now in West Valley for northbound traffic. And then I-15 first slowing near 106 south. Heather? The snow is really slowing things down. Southbound I-15 between 12th Street and Ogden, almost into the Roy area. And northbound I-15 at 31st Street in Ogden, you've got a crash blocking the right lane and shoulder. So everybody's having to move to the left. That's causing delays there as well. We now have winter driving conditions in Sardine Canyon. So the canyon is very slick both directions between Logan and Brigham City. Slight good news though, the earlier crash on US 89 southbound at SR 193 in Layton, that has cleared, but you're still backed up to I-84. Eric. Crash on the Wasatch back. Uh, we already had snow in this area, Silver Creek area, and you got to crash uh, northbound US 40 to go westbound on I-80. And uh, we already had slowdowns there as well too. Uh, westbound on Kearns Boulevard from US 40 into the Park City area and then southbound from Kimball Junction on 224 to go to Park City. So just another thing to pay attention to out there. I-15 I in Utah County, uh, that's looking good right now. We don't have any delays from Santa Quinn to Point of the Mountain. That's a 30-minute drive. Big O Tires is your one-stop shop for tires and service. Now through March 17th, buy three, get one free on select sets of tires. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. More than 10 below the normal today. We'll go for 38 for a high chance for snow showers. Overnight, 26 clearing skies. Tomorrow, 46 with partly cloudy skies. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Back to where we started the morning now. It's uh, 28 degrees downtown. Looking forward to having uh, Inside Sources host Boyd Matheson join me here. Tomorrow, of course, is Super Tuesday. We'll talk about the process here. And uh, maybe I'll bend his ear a little bit about what happened at the uh, over the weekend with some other primaries around the country. Keep it here uh, for more in-depth coverage on KSL. But right now, it's time for Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. Have you heard of grounding, also called earthing? It's not hard. Go outdoors, take a chair, put your take your shoes off, put your feet on the grass, or just sit on the grass and experience grounding. That's the guy who wrote the book on earthing, Clint Ober. So, Clint. Why does grounding make people feel good? Well, the earth has a negative charge. That's why we ground everything electrical to the earth in order to maintain electrical stability. The human body is the most electrical thing in our environment, and it used to be naturally grounded to the earth before the 60s when we invented rubber sole shoes. Now, I don't see people with shoes shooting lightning bolts off their fingers, but my wife does occasionally go outside in wintertime barefoot to get grounded, and she swears by it. To my taste, it's a little bit granola-crunching hippie 60s, but she says it makes her feel good and coaxed me to try it a few weeks ago. It was 40 degrees out. It felt cold, just really, really cold. And worse, creating this minute of news, I had to Google songs about feet, which means I'm going to be seeing some disturbing ads in my Facebook feed for the next few weeks. So, so please, enjoy the songs I found. Happy feet, one of these days are gonna walk all over you. Over, don't you step on my blue suede shoe. My, 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 my shoe. And about loose feet. The latest wrinkle has people slicing off the soles of their shoes. This way, they're always grounded. And when they go to restaurants, wear no shirt, no shoes, no service. They're wearing shoes, but nobody knows you have no soul. It's like a mullet for your feet. Business on the top, fun on the bottom. I've got Except my problem, Google now thinks I like feet a little too much. Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, only on KSL News Radio. IRS harassing you? The law offices of Jordan Wilcox can help. Visit taxhelput.com. Hi, I'm Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox. When the IRS invades your life, it's never good news. It's not just you. My husband passed away. He had been ill for quite some time. And um, he did the taxes, but he forgot to send them in. He never sent the forms in. And this was the beginning of my nightmare. Don't face the IRS alone. With everything in your life at stake, don't trust just anyone. I got all these letters from the IRS telling me I owed them $63,000. I had a good friend that she said, you need an attorney. She said, call Jordan Wilcox. You need someone to fight for you. He said, Cynthia, we're going to give him $3,000. How does that sound? I started crying because I was overwhelmed. Visit TaxHelpUT.com and get relief today. 
Let's solve your tax problems now. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. You have it made in the shade with Jordan Wilcox. That's TaxHelpUT.com. KSL News Time, 745. The three things you need to know this hour. First, more snow for the morning drive and the storm could stick around for the next several hours. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, food pantries throughout the state say they're struggling to keep up with demand. Third, it's traffic and weather together. Well, it looks like uh, the snow has eased up a little bit in the Lake Point area, but you've got huge backups on SR 36 from Stansbury Park to I-80. Reduced speeds because of the wet conditions. Uh, you've got I-15 slowdowns in Ogden in both directions. Now it's starting to get really rough on uh, Legacy going south through Centerville. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. 38 with a chance for snow showers today, then drier and warmer tomorrow. I'm Matt Johnson. And right now in Salt Lake City, it is uh, 28 degrees. Well, we're just a day away from Super Tuesday when more than a third of the delegates for both parties are going to be up for grabs in the form of primary elections and caucuses. Here in Utah, Republicans will caucus. And inside uh, sources host Boyd Matheson is in studio with me to break it down. Before we get there, there were a couple over the weekend, and Nikki Haley actually came out with a win in D.C. That's right. She actually picked up 19 delegates uh, in the District of Columbia over the weekend. And so uh, if, if you're keeping score at home, uh, the, the current score is 244 delegates for the former president, Donald Trump, and you've got uh, 43 delegates uh, for Nikki Haley. And the magic number, because remember, this is all about delegates in the end. Yeah. Uh, the magic number is 1,215. So a long way to go, but tomorrow will be a very big day uh, as a— 15 states will go to the polls tomorrow, and that'll divvy up a, a big chunk of those delegates. I've heard you say often when it comes to many things that process matters. Can we talk about the process of caucus uh, here in Utah? Because we've had some texters over the last several weeks who are really grumpy about this and feel like they're being left out of the process. Yeah, and so, and so if you look at it from uh, obviously on the Democratic side, they're, they are also caucusing tomorrow. Theirs is a little easier uh, with uh, President Biden at the top of the ticket, so not a lot of uh, rumblings or grumblings there. Uh, on the Republican side, the Republicans are also caucusing tomorrow, uh, and then they're also doing a presidential preference poll. Uh, so everyone can participate in that, even if you cannot attend your local neighborhood caucus. You can still go online. You can pre-register there. You can print out the ballot. You can put your presidential preference on there. Give it to a friend, a neighbor, a spouse, or whoever uh, who might be attending and, and actually cast your vote that way. So there's some good news because people may think that, yeah. they, that they don't have opportunities here, but they do. Yeah, that's right. And that's been one of the grumblings in the past over caucuses is what happens if you work that night or what happens if you don't have someone to babysit your children or whatever it may be. Uh, and so I think the, the parties are trying to figure out a way to to make those caucuses more accessible to more people uh, and people can go online and check that out and it really is pretty simple uh, i'll actually be here in studio tomorrow night so i've gone through that process and printed things out and my wife debbie is going to hand that ballot in for me tomorrow night and so everybody can do it everyone can participate and, and have their voice heard uh in the presidential side as well speaking of coverage uh, you're going to be dedicating uh, at least one segment of your show 1 30 today 1 30 tomorrow but i'm sure yeah. more than that to super tuesday yeah that's right we'll do uh, both a, a local focus in terms of what will happen uh, and there and the other parties remember there are smaller parties here in the state of utah who are also going to be caucusing so we'll talk about some of those and then we'll also do the big super tuesday push in terms of what that means on on the national scale, um, we'll be doing that, uh, again, as you said, starting at 1.30 today and tomorrow. Uh, we'll do a full half hour uh, each of those days on uh, Super Tuesday. Well, as I have said so many times, if you're struggling to understand and you want to look beyond the headlines, the place to be is Inside Sources with Boyd every afternoon, 1 to 3 o'clock. Thank you, sir. Thanks. It's 7.49. Let's see how the roads are doing with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Boy, it's slow coming out of Tooele County, Andy. Yeah, the snow's eased a little bit, but it's still really slick and icy. We've got slowdowns on both directions of I-80 and Lake Point, although uh, on the main flow, it's a lot worse on the westbound side going towards Tooele than it is heading out of it, but uh, plenty of delay on SR-36. We've got slowdowns on Mountain View and Bangor now through West Valley at the intersections. We've got some backups on I-15 starting to appear 106 South and 53rd South. Heather? For our slowest area of travel in Weber and Davis County is southbound to I-15 between 12th Street and Ogden down to I-84, but northbounders are also slow in the same area. That's due to a crash blocking the left lane and shoulder right at 31st Street and Ogden. Now, as you come close 
closer to Salt Lake City. We have a lot of delay right now as you transition onto Legacy Parkway from southbound I-15. Those slowdowns go all the way into the Bountiful area, so we may have a crash in that area or just the weather really slowing people down. Eric. Well, uh, snow seems to have enveloped the area of I-80 and U.S. 40. In fact, we got a crash reported on U.S. 40 northbound on the ramp to go westbound on I-80, but it's uh, in general and slow in that area northbound and southbound on 40. If you're southbound 224 from I-80 down into Park City, expect slowdowns there as well as westbound into town from U.S. 40 on Kearns Boulevard and I-80 itself uh, seeing some uh, eastbound slowing going through uh, Lambs Canyon and uh, a little bit uh, east Bound and westbound at the top of Partly Summit. Common Spirit, hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advanced health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Healthcare with human kindness is here. Hello, human kindness. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 day forecast on the chilly side today. 38 degrees with a chance for snow showers. 46 tomorrow, partly cloudy. We'll then go 51 on Wednesday. Yes, warmer, but a chance for some rain, snow, showers. 46, mostly cloudy for Thursday. Friday, 41, partly cloudy. Up to the upper 40s and low 50s for both Saturday and Sunday with some sunshine and clouds. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now, 28 degrees in Salt Lake City. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. On March 5th at 7 p.m., something extraordinary is happening in Utah. The Utah Republican Caucus. It's not just a meeting. It's a gathering of neighbors, friends, and like-minded people united in the pursuit of a stronger state and nation. Come discuss the principles that Utah has and needs. Elect delegates that reflect the heartbeat of our communities. You'll help rescue our nation's future by voting for your preferred Republican presidential candidate. Registered Republicans, show up, be heard. Visit utgop.org to find your local caucus. Paid for by the Utah Republican Party. Do you know how to tell if a clogged drain is something to worry about or not? What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and I understand it's annoying and inconvenient, but sometimes a clogged drain can be a sign there's a more serious issue with your sewer main line. If the drains in the lowest level of your home aren't draining, or you flush a toilet and it comes up somewhere else like a shower or a floor drain, I'm urging you to look at this as more than just an annoyance. The last thing I want you to experience is a sewer backup. If you're a homeowner experiencing any of these issues, the first step would be to snake the line to see if it's just a blockage, which one of our drain techs can do for only $29. Yep, you heard that right. Any Hour Services will snake any drain line with normal access for only $29. Sinks, showers, tubs, toilets, floor drains, laundry drains, even that sewer main line that connects to the city. We'll snake any line for just $29. For help with your drain issues, call Any Hour Services at 801-443-7700. You can Google Any Hour Services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. No one helps more homeowners than Any Hour Services. Dave and Dijanovic. One person described it like this. I like having a thousand one-minute conversations. So often we think we've got to dive in head first and know everything before we can speak on something. No, we can have a bunch of little conversations. There's more than one opinion and more than one opinion or viewpoint matters. I want our listeners to walk away from the show knowing that more than one opinion is valid. Listen for Dave and Dejanovic 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dejanovic. 45 days and it's over. Lawmakers passed hundreds of bills. This week, we'll give you the five biggest bills that either passed or failed, starting with the stadiums. Major League Baseball, NHL, NBA. I'll tell you which one I think is inevitable today on Dave and Dujanovic. Watching Utah's Money is brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. The U.S. national debt is rising by $1 trillion every 100 days. Analysts say the trend has been constant since last June. The debt total now sits at $34.4 trillion. Well, more than 61,000 pounds of Trader Joe's steamed chicken soup dumplings are being recalled for possibly containing hard plastic from a permanent marker, of all things. No illnesses or injuries have been reported. Your money at this moment. Uh, everything is in the red to start the day. The first half hour of trading, the Dow is off 109. That's about three-tenths. The S&P is down less than seven. The Nasdaq also off about two-tenths of a percent, or 34 points. <laughs> And it's time this morning for Cougar Tracks. Here's KSL Sports BYU insider Mitch Harper. The good times continue to roll for BYU basketball. On Saturday, BYU stormed back from a 17-point halftime deficit 
to defeat TCU 87-75. It was the largest comeback at the midway point of a game in the Mark Pope era. Pope credits one key attribute from his team to pull off the comeback. These guys demonstrated toughness tonight. You know, toughness, sometimes we mistake. Sometimes we mistake toughness for yelling and screaming and fouling and grabbing and punching. But actually toughness, real toughness, is the ability to focus when everything around you is going sideways and you don't even feel right yourself. And these guys were brilliant with their toughness tonight. BYU is now 21-8 and overall and 9-7 and in Big 12 Conference play. It's back on the road for the Cougars as they travel to take on nationally ranked Iowa State this Wednesday night in Ames. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. right here on KSL. With Cougar Tracks, I'm Mitch Harper on your legacy home of the BYU Cougars. KSL News Radio. Imagine it's the final game of the season, but your symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome with constipation or IBSC are making a comeback. What should you do? Keep managing your constipation with belly pain the same old way? Or try getting ahead of your symptoms by talking to your doctor about Linzess, linaclotide. Linzess is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative. It's a once daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Imagine, what could relief from IBSC mean for you? Talk to your doctor and say yes to Linzess. Learn more at Linzess.com or call 1-800-L-I-N-Z-E-S-S. Do you hear that? If you're like many people, that's the sound of your money. Just lying there in a checking or savings account doing nothing when it could be out there earning more money for you. But at America First Credit Union, we can give your money a wake-up call. What? What's that? Rise and shine, Bucky. We can get your money working in a high-yield certificate account earning you a much better return than traditional checking and savings. Up and at him, buddy. We gotta go. Huh? Where are we going? To America First. You'll love it there. They're going to help you do so much awesome stuff. Mm. All right, all right, I'm coming. So get your money working with a high-yield certificate from America First. Head to AmericaFirst.com today to check out the latest amazing rates. Subject to membership, eligibility, terms, conditions, and change. Federally insured by NCUA. KSL News Time, 759. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. We go back over to Andy Farnsworth. Well, Tim, things moving a little bit more smoothly now on I-80 and Lake Point than they were in the last half hour. So the snow has stopped falling there, but slick conditions continue, and it's forcing, because of snowy uh, shoulders, putting people from SR-36 a little bit merging sooner than they want to, and so that's another reason for the backups. Uh, we've still got I-15 slowdowns, but only around 33rd South as you head from Draper to downtown, and Mountain View and Bangor expect some extra travel time to the intersections in West Valley. Heather? Well, I-15 is delayed both northbound and southbound between 12th Street and Ogden down to I-84. Northbound is due to a crash still blocking the right lane and shoulder. And if you're heading southbound and transition onto Legacy Parkway, you're going to come into a wall of traffic all the way down to about 1600 north and bountiful we're assuming that too is due to a crash but unfortunately the cameras are covered in snow and so we can't actually see the road eric plenty of delays out in the uh, park city area on i-80 where it uh, uh, you exit to go uh, on to 224 or to us 40 in both cases exiting is gonna, you're going to see some delays going south but you have northbound delays too on us 40 because of a crash on the ramp to go the westbound on i-80 and uh, down utah county this is the exception to the rule everything's looking good on the freeway down there use superior water and air for all your hvac and plumbing needs call 974-9090 or visit superiorwaterandair.com superior water and air we got this eric butler in the ksl traffic center 38 for a high today represents the coldest day of the next week 30 percent chance of showers continuing and it's 28 degrees downtown KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good morning. KSL News Time is 8 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Tim Hughes. Amanda Dixon has the morning off. Our top story two people are dead following a workplace shooting in Salt Lake City over the weekend. 
KSL News Radio's Adam Small is following the investigation and has the very latest. Adam? Tim, police say the first 911 call came in around 2.30 yesterday from one of the employees working at Verex Imaging here behind me near 1700 South and 2700 West. Salt Lake City Police spokesperson Brent Weisberg says when officers arrived, one person was found dead inside, another outside with a gun nearby, and there were other employees on site that police are now trying to help. When there is workplace violence, that can have an emotional toll on them, a very... Um, profound impact on them. That's why we want to make sure that our social workers and our victim advocates are on scene to help them. Now, a company spokesperson later told KSL in a statement the alleged shooter was one of the two people killed, but in terms of a motive and in terms of that statement, police are still investigating. Live at the scene, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. A South Salt Lake 18 year old is facing a murder charge after a fight between friends ended in gunshots. Police say that a 17-year-old died inside Anthony Woodrow's home. Woodrow told police he was afraid of being attacked. KSL Weather Now with Matt Johnson. We are uh, we have uh, snow that's causing some problems on the roads now in Tooele, Ogden, Sardine Canyon, and a few other places. Snow showers for the Salt Lake Valley and most of the Wasatch Front, especially north of Salt Lake, into the lunch hour, maybe a couple of hours beyond that. Matter of fact, it's causing some problems on the roads, especially coming out of Tooele County. And, Andy, that's at a standstill at the moment. Yeah, they had a car look like it was going to go off the freeway, and it may have, but they've got it in the shoulder. But also the snow on the shoulder forcing people back into traffic a little sooner than they'd like. But lots of areas struggling now, including I-80 between the Summit and Park City uh, in Parley's Canyon. A bunch of delay going south and Legacy in Centerville. North Salt Lake's getting worse. Ogden's had problems this morning. It's basically wherever the snow has touched, it's gotten really bad. And wherever it hasn't, it's been fine. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. It's that time of year, too, where potholes start popping up on the roads thanks to that freeze and thaw cycle. KSL News Radio's Britt Johnson has more. The freeze-thaw cycle really does a number on Utah roads. During the cold winter months, maintenance crews have to put temporary solutions into place. Soon they'll be out adding more permanent fixes. Until then, John Gleason with UDOT says if you see a pothole ahead, proceed with caution. Potholes can cause tire damage or even accidents depending on their size. UDOT hopes to manage them the best they can over the next few months. UDOT hopes that longer green lights will help ease traffic congestion in fast-growing northern Utah County. UDOT is making a major change to commuter roads in Lehigh in an attempt to ease traffic. They're implementing longer green lights on 2100 North, Pioneer Crossing, and Redwood Road. The green lights will be extended specifically for the evening commute right now, but by March 12th, it'll also be implemented for the morning commute. UDOT says this is mainly to help ease traffic caused by rapid growth in the area, which has seen more than 60,000 new residents move in over the last three years. Emma Keddington, KSL News Radio. Utah will play a part in choosing the two main presidential nominees tomorrow, but the way voters uh, can do that gets a little confusing. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live to hopefully explain it all. Peter? Tim, the short explanation is that Republicans will have to vote in person, while Democrats have to vote by mail. Republicans who are wanting to attend the caucus tomorrow are going to find their local precinct online, which is usually a church, a school, or a home, and then they're going to register before showing up at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. I'm actually a one right now that could see people from all over Salt Lake City, but the doors are closed to anyone who's not a registered Republican. On the other hand, Utah Democrats are going more conventional, and they're going to have to mail in their ballots if they want to pick their presidential nominee. The state party is still going to hold caucuses, but attendees are voting for delegates at the Democratic National Convention and not their pick for president. So if you're heading to a caucus tomorrow, make sure you check out the article on kslnewsradio.com because we got links there that are going to guide you to places you need to register. Reporting live from one of those precincts in Salt Lake City, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. Now KSL's top national stories this hour. Voters around the country expressing their worries about the age of the leading presidential candidates. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Trump and Biden have both faced questions about their age and mental acuity. In recent days, Biden mixed up Ukraine and Gaza. Airdrops of, of uh, additional food and supplies in Ukraine. And over the weekend, Trump again appeared to mix up Biden and former President Obama. Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear war. In presidential primaries over the weekend, President Trump won in Idaho, Missouri, and Michigan. Nikki Haley winning in Washington, D.C. 
A missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has died in New Jersey from some kind of medical problem. A spokesperson for the church says that Elder Mac Jared Chapel became unresponsive over the weekend and could not be revived. The 19-year-old was from Sugar City, Idaho. It's unclear this morning what that medical emergency was. Yeah, some breaking news on KSL. We just received a Supreme Court ruling. The high court says Colorado cannot prevent former President Donald Trump from appearing on the ballot in 2024. We are gathering reaction and we'll have a lot more coverage coming up on KSL News Radio as we were talking earlier this morning with uh, ABC's M. Wynn. Um, this obviously has and will have impact on more than just Colorado, with a couple of other states also having similar. Uh, legislation. A couple from Highland is competing in a cabin renovation reality TV show. KSL News Radio's Michael Cummit joins us live. Michael? Tim, Jeremy and Jessica Rock have only been married for less than a year, but they made quite the underdog story in this season of Cabin Wars, Flip It to Win It, down in New Orleans. They were given 20 grand and a month to flip an old cabin. When we told people we were going to do this because we are newlyweds, they were like, oh, this will be a real test of your teamwork. <laughs> Now, it took a lot, but they went for a light, heavy outdoor theme. And now there's a chance they could win the $40,000 season prize. We'll find out if they do when the show streams later on in April. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. Mother Nature having an effect on the drive. I 15 still delayed in Ogden, both directions, as well as uh, northbound SR 36 from Stansbury up to I 80. Traffic and weather together in two minutes. It's do or die for Nikki Haley. I'm willing to take the cuts because I think. Good things come when you go through the pain. Special coverage all day Monday and Tuesday with results and election night coverage starting Tuesday at 5 on KSL News Radio. Hi, this is Doug Wright. A little experiment here that you can try in your home just for fun. Take two water heaters, run hard water through one and soft water through the other, then count how many years each one lasts. Now, of course, I can save you all that trouble because the experiment takes place every day in countless homes right here in the state of Utah. The result's always the same. Hard water makes water heaters and other appliances conk out years before they should. And that's why when Dee and I build our new home, I informed the builder that we'd have Connecticut put in our soft water. I just won't settle for anything else. With Kinetico, you'll use two-thirds less salt. All the mechanical design makes it virtually maintenance-free. And I'll tell you what, your water heater and other appliances will last years longer. All you have to do is contact my friends at Kinetico of Utah, an authorized Kinetico dealer. To learn more, call Kinetico. It's 801-576-8600 or log on to softwaterutah.com. When you want a brand new kitchen, there's nothing to it. There's a brand new way to do it. Three day kitchen and bath. Rochelle talks about her experience with three day kitchen and bath. It was a wonderful experience. I had heard about them on the radio. They come out to your house, they let you know what they do, uh, they let you pick out your features, your colors, and then they come into your home. The morning they start, they walk you through, this is what's going to happen, and you leave for a few days, and you come home, and it's done. Was it easy? It made it easy because you're not in the middle of a mess for two or three months. Left on a Tuesday morning, and it was done on a Thursday night. We came home Friday morning early because we were so excited. What was your reaction when you first saw it? Wow. Wow. It's about time. Three days or less. At Three Day Kitchen and Bath. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, breaking news just moments ago, the Supreme Court ruling came down that Colorado cannot prevent former President Donald Trump from appearing on the ballot in the 2024 race. Uh, and uh, we will have more coverage with ABC. But here's the important, the other important fact about this breaking news. It was a unanimous decision, 9-0 from the Supreme Court. They did stop short of getting into the discussion on uh, uh, some of the other aspects of this, but uh, it will affect some other pending, le uh, other pending court cases in uh, two other states at least. There were several others that were waiting for this decision to come down, so we'll see what effect it may have in Maine and Illinois, for example. 
We'll have uh, more coverage coming up in depth here in just a minute. It's uh, 8.09, time for a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Slow going if you're coming into the valley from Tooele County, Andy. Yeah, that's been the big problem for uh, traffic in the valley itself. We've got uh, delays on uh, Lake Point trying to get to I-80 on SR-36. But once you get into the valley, freeways have been okay for the most part. I-15 only a little bit slow right now between 33rd South and I-80. But Mountain View and Bangor are seeing fairly typical wait times through the intersections through West Valley up to 21st South. Heather? Traffic is still pretty slow for those of you transitioning onto Legacy Parkway in the Farmington area all the way down into Centerville and a bit into Bountiful. We've never heard of a crash in the area. There is plenty of snow coming down making for wet roads. It could be snow plows. It could be a crash. Just be aware it's going to take you extra time if you use Legacy this morning. Now I-15 up in the Ogden area you still have a bit of slowing both northbound and southbound around 24th Street a uh, cruiser just finished cleaning up a crash in that area, so hopefully speeds will improve uh, soon. Eric? I-15 continues to be good in Utah County. Uh, it's been a bright spot across the valley this morning, maybe not technically, but you could do have dry roads and uh, from Spanish Fork up to Point of the Mountain for the most part. Uh, no problems there with wet spots and a 24-minute drive. If you're out on the Wasatch Bank, you do have slowing on US-40 with snow uh, uh, at being part of the factor uh, on US 40 just south of I 80, as well as on 224. If you're exiting I 80 going south to Park City, that's also uh, affected by the weather and usual slowdowns. Get Mr. Max Performance Missionary Package, including one performance suit, four and collar stretch shirts, three ties, one mission belt, one pair of Echo, or Johnson & Murphy shoes, just $595. Eric Butler and the KSL Traffic Center. The last piece of our storm system over the weekend will slide through today. That'll keep snow showers in play, high of only 38. Overnight, 26 clearing skies. For tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds, 46 the high. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now, 28 degrees. So on the heels of that uh, breaking news from the Supreme Court that Donald Trump will remain on the ballot in Colorado, I just noticed that uh, Governor Spencer Cox just sent out a tweet saying this was an easy call, and I'm glad that it was unanimous. 9-0 from the Supreme Court justices' reaction, I'm sure, throughout the morning, throughout the day here on KSL and the effect that it will have on other states as well. Stay with us, and remember, you'll always find us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. This Monday Tax Tip is brought to you by Susan Spears, CEO of the Utah Association of CPAs. Did you know that you may be missing out on important deductions and credits if you don't correctly claim your dependence on your income taxes? Remember to provide social security numbers for your children or other dependents. If you are divorced, only one parent may claim the child as a dependent. If you both claim the same child as a dependent, the processing of your return will come to a screeching halt while the IRS works with the parties to straighten things out. Work with your CPA to streamline the process. Get the most out of your income tax preparation when you hire a CPA. Go to uacpa.org to find a CPA that's right for you. That's uacpa.org. uacpa.org. Listen to KSL on Monday for more tax tips from the Utah Association of CPAs. Les Olson IT structured cabling is second to none. Tired of old and inefficient cabling? Have an upgrade or remodel planned? building a new network from the ground up? We offer the very best in low voltage cabling installation, including data, phone, fiber optic, and more. Ask us how to get your free consultation today. Less Olsen IT. Ah, the life of a small business owner. Keeping the lights on, calling all the shots, and then there's workplace accidents. 500 degree ovens, rusty nails. Danger lurks around every corner. Workplace accidents can happen, but there is an easy way to keep your employees covered. Talk to your agent about workers' comp coverage from Pi, or go to piinsurance.com and get a quote. Safety first, then Pi Insurance. Individual rates, offerings, and savings may vary. Subject to policy terms and conditions. Not available in all states and situations. I love being a bartender. I love waiting tables. But at the end of my shift, my feet were killing me. 
And so I had to pretend like I was having a good time and really I couldn't wait to sit down. But it wasn't just my feet, it was also my knees were achy. A lot of neck pain too. I was in so much pain, I kind of lost hope, really. And then I saw the Good Feet store and that's when everything changed. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Kristen enjoy their work again without their feet getting in the way. It was pretty shocking to realize that I'd been in so much pain and suddenly I'm completely pain free. Now that I have the Good Feet Arch Supports, I don't have to pretend to be happy. I'm genuinely happy. So, cheers. My name is Kristen and that's my Good Feet story. See what we can do for you with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. Stop by the Good Feet store in Farmington, Riverton, or Sandy for a free fitting. Call 1-800-NEW-FEET or visit goodfeet.com. This portion of the news brought to you by the Good Feet store. The life you love starts here. KSL News Time 815. <laughs> The three things you need to know this hour. First, Super Tuesday is coming up tomorrow, but Utah voters will have to take different paths to vote for their chosen presidential nominee. I'm KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Second, the Supreme Court has ruled Colorado elections officials cannot keep the former president off the ballot. We have a special report in just a moment from ABC News. Third, let's check the drive with traffic and weather together. Well, the longest freeway slowdowns right now are probably going to be, it looks like, in Farmington, uh, and that's on Legacy running south from Farmington all the way down into Bountiful. Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, freeway delays any longer. I-80 is only minor slowdowns at Lake Point, but there's a lot of delay on SR-36 to get on the freeway. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Cold with snow showers today, high of only 38. I'm Matt Johnson. No snow for the moment downtown, 28 degrees, and time for a look at our top national stories this morning. From ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. A lot of people are watching the U.S. Supreme Court right now. Observers say they expect the justices will rule any minute on whether states can disqualify Donald Trump from appearing on the ballot because of his participation in the events of January 6th. The case involves Colorado. Here's ABC's Stephen Portnoy. There's no way for us to be certain that the Colorado case is coming. It's basically a good guess on the part of reporters. As for how the court will rule, it's worth remembering that when the justices heard oral argument last month, they expressed concern about the lack of a national framework for deciding who might be disqualified under the 14th Amendment. Across ideological lines, it seemed to be the view of the justices that individual states shouldn't be deciding for the whole country who can or can't run for president. Tomorrow. And, of course, that ruling uh, came down just in the last few minutes that Colorado cannot prevent former President Donald Trump from appearing on the ballot in uh, 2024 it was a unanimous decision debbie dujanovic yeah. nine nothing yeah and i'm just looking at the ap version of the story it just broke a few minutes ago tim and and it was well timed by the supreme court i think that voters deserve to know the day before super tuesday which yeah. is tomorrow uh what uh how they would rule on the former president being back on the ballot but the ap uh, the associated press reporting the uh supreme court decision today essentially ends efforts not only in Colorado. Colorado, but also in Illinois and Maine and in other places. Uh, there were other states that were attempting to keep uh, President Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump, off the ballot. That question has now been settled by the Supreme Court. We'll get into more details today on that. I know later in the show here and also on the David Nujanovic show. But I think Super Tuesday here in Utah, it's actually called uh, caucus night presidential preference poll will be taken for republicans democrats should have gotten their ballots mailed out already um however uh it with the uh with the republican party they're doing things a lot differently than they have done in the past where they're holding these caucus nights uh, this uh, these caucus meetings tomorrow night 2500 different precincts across utah mm. um sounds daunting doesn't yeah it? And and one of the uh, caveats uh, to make or qualifications to make sure you can participate is you have to be a registered Republican voter, and you also um, have to be 18 years old on or before the day of the general election. Mm. So even even teens who are 17, as long as you're going to turn 18 by the general election, you can participate in the Republican caucus nights. We have so many details. I, I just looked at our kslnewsradio.com article on this. That's your one-stop shopping for all things, um, you know, Super Tuesday. Locations, maps, details, and links. So kslnewsradio.com, your go-to um, online. And, of course, KSL News Radio, your go-to on air. Yeah, we'll have great coverage today and tomorrow and even uh, starting tomorrow evening. 
uh, with team coverage here on KSL, so make sure you stick around. It's 819. Time for a look at the uh, drive this morning with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay App. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. We go back to Andy Farnsworth. Well, Tim, slowdowns are decreasing on I-80 out of Tooele, but SR-36 still going to take an extra 5 to 10 minutes to get from Stansbury Park onto I-80 because of snowy conditions. Uh, even though the snow isn't falling anymore, the road conditions are still kind of uh, slushy and wet. Uh, we've got Mountain View delays running both directions. Uh, we're slower than usual between 6200 South and 7800 South in West Jordan. But I-15, only a little bit of slowing downtown right before 1300 South on the main flow. Heather? We're looking okay through Weber and Davis County. Roads are pretty wet and snow is sticking still in some areas, especially in the higher elevations like Sardine Canyon and also Weber Canyon on I-84 to and from Mountain Green. But traffic a bit slow below the speed limit if you are southbound coming out of Ogden to Riverdale and again from North Salt Lake into downtown. Legacy Parkway remains a bit stop and go though between Farmington and Centerville. Eric. Pretty slow in spots uh, along the Wasatch Bank and from I-80 of Parley Summit getting t- in- into the Wasatch Bank. You got slowdowns uh, eastbound on I-80 there and then exiting at Kimball Junction to go southbound on 224. If you continue on I-80 over to Silver Creek, expect more slowing and snow. Uh, this morning got a crash northbound from 40 to go westbound I-80 and your usual slowdowns from uh, US 40 into Park City via Kearns Boulevard. I-15 Utah County. That's not bad this morning and it hasn't been all morning long uh, right now from Santa Quinn to Point of the Mountain. That's 30 minute drive. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 8 forecast has the coldest of the next seven. Today 38 the high. Chance for snow showers. Tomorrow partly cloudy 46 up to 51 with a chance for rain snow showers on Wednesday. Thursday, 46, mostly cloudy skies. We'll drop it back to 41, partly cloudy on Friday. Weekend looks warmer and drier, upper 40s, low 50s. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now in Salt Lake City, uh, light snow, just a few flakes here and there, but uh, 29 degrees in the seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Want to remind everybody that uh, there'll be another fun hour starting at 6 o'clock tonight for Cougar Nation coming your way here on KSL. I'm sure Mitch and Matt will be looking back at a big come from behind victory. It came back from 17 points against TCU on uh, Saturday night in front of a raucous crowd there at the Marriott Center. So look forward to that tonight starting at 6 o'clock. KSL News Time 822 this hour of Utah's Morning News brought to you by our friends at UACPA. We're talking about the importance of having a good uh, CPA by your side as we head into tax season here. Ron Thurber is with us. He is a tax manager at CBiz. Ron, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm glad we're talking about this, and that is security. I, I, I guess I'm not the only one, but I, I can tell you that this is front of mind for me because two years ago, somebody filed a duplicate uh, return with all of my information, and it took me almost, well, two full years to get my return from that year. Yes, it's quite a lot of work to resolve that. Yeah, but uh, having a CPA can navigate some of this, and that's because you guys will always uh, do encrypted uh, filings, right? Yes. How do people, or what, should they be watching for here when it comes to IRS fraud? Well, what you need to do to help uh, prevent the situation is if you file your income taxes early, that helps. You also need to uh, monitor your online accounts and transactions and look for any unfamiliar transactions or discrepancies. That way you get an idea of of what's going on. Also, uh, I've had this question asked of me before because they know we talk with Susan uh, from time to time. So I've become a tax expert (laughs) vicariously here, I guess. Um, How do we know it's the IRS on the other end? Are there specific things that happen where we can say, "Mm, yeah, I'm not going to respond to that? Yeah, usually when an IRS uh, person calls, they'll usually give you their badge number. And you can also ask them, well, what notice number are you talking about? Because you should have already received that notice number. And you can also ask them for their telephone number. You can give them a, a call back. And there's some certain things an IRS employee will not uh, do. They will not call demanding an immediate payment. They will not call you without first sending a bill in the mail. And they will not demand that you pay your taxes in a sp- specific way. And they will not ask for your credit or debit card numbers over the phone. 
or threaten you with arrest or legal action. So those are some of the ways that you know it's an I- IRS agent on the phone. Yeah, uh, and anytime anybody asks for those kinds of details, or in particular my social security number, I'm really suspicious. You should be. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk more about this throughout the hour, but we want you to make sure and get the most out of your income tax preparation by hiring a CPA. Just go to uacpa.org and find a CPA that's right for you. A happy place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters, that's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at certapro.com. It already feels like home. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. The IRS, speaking of the IRS, is coming for high-income taxpayers today. The agency says they're going to be sending out at least 125,000 compliance letters to high earners that cheated on their taxes. Tax authorities say they've been cheated out of hundreds of millions of dollars. If you've ever wanted IHOP and Applebee's at the same time, you may be in luck. A dining company is looking at launching dual-brand restaurants to the U.S. The CEO says the prototype has been successful in several other counties, and uh, they uh, share space, or sharing space, actually helps with efficiency. Keeping an eye on Japan's Nikkei index today, too, it hit a record high, closing above 40,000 points for the first time ever. The index has risen more than 20% so far in 2024 alone. The NASDAQ and S&P both hit uh, new highs last week. Looks like we're going to give some of that back, however, starting uh, this week. The Dow is down about 122 points. That's three-tenths. Early this morning, it was down over a half a percent. The S&P is down just eight. The NASDAQ also in the red by about 35. That represents about two-tenths of a percent. Mountain View Corridor now running slow from West Jordan to Kearns. We'll see what's happening there with traffic and weather together when we come back. Revere Health is dedicated to making healthcare easier and more accessible by offering the latest technologies to improve the patient experience. We offer convenient telehealth appointments so you can receive care from the comfort of your own home. We also offer an online patient portal called Follow My Health that enables you to manage your healthcare online. When you download the Follow My Health app, you can exchange direct messages with your doctor, view lab and test results as soon as they are available, renew prescriptions, and review upcoming appointments. If you're ready to schedule your annual physical for 2024, we've made that easier too. Revere Health now offers the ability to schedule appointments online for primary care and select specialties. Visit our website at reverehealth.com to learn more or to schedule your next appointment online. Through these convenient solutions, Revere Health demonstrates its commitment to quality, patient-centric care every day. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner for life. Tomorrow's vote may seal the race for president. The two major parties in Utah are taking opposite approaches. Democrats will have a primary election. United Utah Party and American Independent Party will also be having their caucuses. It all begins by showing up. Caucus night is the opportunity to do that. Super Tuesday. 16 states and territories vote and more than a thousand delegates are awarded. Listen for special coverage today and tomorrow. Plus, get analysis and reaction all day Wednesday. Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus on KSL News Radio. 829 means traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Wow, look at West Valley City, Andy. Yeah, it wasn't snowing earlier, but it is now, and it is really slick. In fact, uh, we've had a report that uh, several vehicles have slid off the road in that stretch between 6200 and 5400 South, and there is a pretty big delay down the hill towards 7800 South. If you've driven that stretch, you know that gets really slick and iffy. This might be a time to just actually use 5600 West instead of Mountain View uh, with uh, the snow coming down that hard. It's not coming down like that on I-15. You've got a little bit of slowing in Draper near Bangor Highway and then the full speed limit the rest of the way downtown, Heather. Well, the earlier delays we had on I-15 in the Ogden area have cleared out both northbound and southbound. 
But if you continue southbound toward downtown Salt Lake, you'll see some typical slowdowns from Beck Street into the Salt Lake City area. Legacy Parkway also a bit under the speed limit between Farmington, Centerville, and a bit into West Bountiful. But overall, you now have a pretty good drive in Weber and Davis counties. Eric? Well, we do have some light snow along the Wasatch Buck, but it's the uh, slick road conditions, I believe, that are causing most of the delays. If you're on I-80 from uh, Lambs Canyon out to the Kimball Junction exit, and then on both uh, 224 and US 40, as well as uh, Kearns Boulevard, all of those are slow this morning. I-15, Utah County, got a little bit of slowing now on the northbound side, approaching Spanish Fork, but that's about it. Uh, even with that, uh, the way it looks right now, you don't have major delays any place in the county. I'm Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. We're only going to hit a high of 38. That means it'll be the coldest day of the next seven, gradually making our way to 51 by Wednesday. But all the way through Thursday, we've got this same 30% chance of showers. So occasional snow probably passing through the Wasatch. Be careful if you're on the west side of the valley right now. Snowing in 29 degrees. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 8:30, and our top story this half hour: we had some on and off again snow showers this morning, and that's led to some problems on the roads. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is on his way to Ogden. Adam, how are things there? Well, Tim, I made it as far as Kaysville, and I got to say, from the time that we saw the forecast then to where I've driven up here now, I think I might have scared it off. The roads are actually clearing out real nicely, uh, though when I was driving on Legacy Parkway, I'm making my way up before I connected back onto I-15. You could definitely see about a half inch of snow or so that had started accumulating um, a little bit on the road, more so on the sides, but I also saw plows have been out there. They've been coming through, making sure things are clear. I-15 is, is pretty well dry in, in this area. We know that in, depending on the area you're in, you could see maybe up to an inch of snow accumulating. Um, Alta, according to KSL meteorologist Matt Johnson, Alta can see maybe two to five inches with just these little brush by isolated uh, snowstorms this morning. Uh, Matt says they could potentially be on again, off again into the lunch hour, maybe into this afternoon before tonight that is expected to fully taper off. Uh, we're not expecting a ton of snow for the rest of the week after what we're seeing today, but we are going to potentially have a uh, very slight chance, about a 30% chance of seeing rain or snow, at least in Salt Lake City, through Thursday. Right now, reporting live in Kaysville, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. We continue to follow the breaking news from moments ago. The Supreme Court has ruled that Colorado elections officials will have to keep former President Trump on the ballot. Here's the latest now from ABC News. This is a special report from ABC News. Trump stays on the ballot. The Supreme Court has decided Donald Trump can appear on Colorado's primary ballot. The court were unanimously reversing a decision from Colorado's highest court, which ruled Trump is ineligible to run after his efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Mike Dubusky, ABC News. Joining me live on the KSL Newsline for more analysis is KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis. The important thing, I think, for all of us, Greg, is that it was unanimous. Yeah, that's true. And I don't know that that was a big surprise, Tim, although I would say this. There were three opinions issued. So while everyone agreed on the result, that is uh, that the states cannot use the 14th Amendment of the Constitution to exclude federal candidates, they disagreed a little bit on why. So there were five uh, justices that that concurred in the in the main opinion. Uh, Amy Coney Barrett wrote her own concurring, we'll call it, opinion. And then Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson wrote a second concurring opinion. So, yes, the, the decision was unanimous. The logic behind it was not necessarily unanimous. Well, uh, I hate to get too far into the weeds here, but what were the differences between Colorado, Maine, and Illinois? Um, well, well, you know, every state has sort of had to de deal with its own issues. And I would say that with respect to Maine and Illinois, they're going to have to follow the same rule. I mean, this is going to be the, the law of the land for now, and that is that states cannot exclude uh, can federal candidates from their ballots under the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. So I would expect that Maine and Illinois are going to have to look at this opinion and fall in line. That is to say, uh, if Trump is, in fact, the Republican candidate for president, and it looks very much, uh, Tim, like he will be 
he'll be on the ballot in all 50 states. This was always considered to be a long shot, and although you can't tell from you know oral arguments uh, at the Supreme Court which way they're leaning, there wasn't much doubt in even legal experts' minds on which way this was going to go from the very get-go. Yeah, that seems to be the case, and I think a lot of people recognize exactly what you just said, Tim, and that is that when we heard the arguments, all nine justices were not too uh, – they weren't too keen to follow the Colorado uh, opinion. But I would say this. I mean, it was a very well-thought-out opinion by the Colorado Supreme Court. It was a unanimous opinion, and it was an opinion authored by uh, Supreme Court justices there that included uh, what would be considered a Democratic and Republican appointees. So it, it wasn't just uh, – I mean, I, I agree with everything you just said. That is that we – kind of realized that the United States Supreme Court was going to follow this. But the Colorado Supreme Court opinion was really, really well thought out and interesting. It just uh, couldn't probably stay on the books. Uh, I don't know that our country could have withstood something like that. Well, and we said from the beginning, too, that it would be interesting to see if the Supreme Court did indeed weigh in on the definition of insurrection, who can decide who has uh, committed insurrection, Because that then would have an effect on possibly the uh, cases that are pending, especially with special counsel Jack Smith. The Supreme Court stayed out of that. Yeah, they really did. And in fact, the Colorado court had a five-day trial. Uh, That is the trial court in Colorado and found that there was an insurrection and that uh, Donald Trump was engaged in that. So I don't think the Supreme Court was going to revisit the facts and argument and evidence that was presented at that trial Rather, they just dodged the question and said, look, whether there was an insurrection or not, it's not the state's business to decide what federal candidates can sit for office and can be on that particular state's ballots. But that's a very good point you just made. It's also clear that they wanted to get this done before Super Tuesday, is it not? Yeah, that's interesting because Super Tuesday, I think, is tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they cut it close. But it was important, and, and that's, that's a very, very good point. It was important that this could be done as soon as possible with uh, a, a different states' uh, primaries on, on tap, uh, the, the convention coming up soon. Uh, this will certainly quell a lot of arguments about whether Trump's going to be on ballots in various states and make sure that other states aren't just filing these these motions. And as you said, uh, now becomes the law of the land. Greg Scordis, as always, thanks for your instant analysis this morning. KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis joining me to uh, help sort out the details, something we're going to see the ramifications of and reaction to, I'm sure, throughout the rest of the day. We'll check traffic and weather together again coming up in two minutes. Join your friends who rely on KSL each morning for the fastest routes to work and school. Uh, I like traffic on the nines. So I need to get the kids up earlier so that my son isn't driving quickly in a snowstorm. Traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines on KSL News Radio. Only one type of burger <laughs> for every pallet. Yay! Fries are extra, <laughs> large in size. Yay! We've got the shakes <laughs> going over the brim. Hey, this is Chris from JCW's. Put a positive, delicious spin on your day at any one of our five locations. In Lehigh, American Fork, Provo, South Jordan, or Harriman. JCW's, quality and a lot of it. It's the question that's been on everybody's mind, and it's about to be answered. When will Gillette Heating and Air offer plumbing services? You want to know? Yeah! The answer is (gasps) now. To celebrate, Gillette is offering a free tankless water heater when you buy a high-efficiency heating and cooling system. For a limited time while supplies last, call Gillette today for heating, AC, and now plumbing. Call 385-GET-HEAT. Carrier, turn to the experts. We will have more, by the way, on this Supreme Court ruling this morning that Donald Trump can indeed stay on the Colorado ballot. Uh, Coming up as Boyd Matheson joins me in just a few minutes, so stay with us there. In the meantime, let's see what the drive looks like with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Andy, it's snowing in places pretty good, too. Yeah, right now it's tough to drive on Mountain View Corridor between West Jordan and West Valley because of the snowfall, and it's really sticking, and that's a 
Slippery Road, 5600 West or even Highway 111 are going to be a little bit better alternates than uh, Mountain View right now in that stretch. I-15, that's actually going okay. There's a little stretch between 72 and 5300 South where traffic's hitting the brakes. And the West Belt's got some delay right now near the 201 freeway turnoff. Heather? The snow is moving out of Weber and Davis counties, but they have left behind some wet road conditions. Things are a little bit dicey around US 89 I-84 in South Weber at the mouth of Weber Canyon. And you've got a report of an accident in Ogden on Wall Avenue, but I haven't seen that in cameras. Things are a bit slow on 5600 South. That is heading eastbound between 3500 West and I-15, but I-15 itself fairly good until you get closer to downtown Salt Lake. It's a bit slow there. Eric. Out in the Park City area, the snow is falling, the roads are slippery, and you got a long line of eastbound cars on I-80 trying to exit at Kimball Junction. Then from there, southbound 224 into Park City is going to be slow. Now you can go past the Kimball Junction exit and go south on US-40, and for a while that might seem like a good idea until you exit US-40 and then turn to go west on Currents Boulevard in the park scene. Then you've got your usual delays there, though not as much as on 224. I-15, Utah County, it is getting slow now in Spanish Fork, northbound and southbound from Spanish Fork up to a Springville exit. That's 400 south. Is the IRS harassing you? Are tax problems ruining your life? Let Utah Tax Attorney Jordan Wilcox help. Visit ta- TaxHelpUT.com. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Eric Butler, KSL Traffic Center. Another chilly March day on tap. High of only only 38 with a chance for snow showers. Overnight, we'll drop off to 26. Tomorrow, 46, partly cloudy skies. Maybe another chance for some showers on Wednesday, but warmer, 51. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 29 degrees in Salt Lake City. And coming up, Boyd Matheson will join me. We'll get his reaction to the Supreme Court uh, decision that was handed down this hour. So stay with me. And remember, you'll always find us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. This hour of Utah's Morning News brought to you by the UACPA and Ron Thurber. CPA himself is the tax manager at CBiz. He's back with me. I told you, Ron, uh, in our first chat last half hour that I've been through this myself just a couple of years ago. I didn't know there was a problem until the IRS actually sent me a letter and told me that there were two different returns that had all of my same information on it, and I had to prove who I was, which was not an easy task. So is there a way for individual taxpayers out there to avoid what I went through? Are there some things they can do now? Um, yes, there are, there are things that you can do to help prevent your identity from being stolen. You can actually uh, hire an identity theft uh, p- provider you know, that, that helps you with that, an insurance provider. They'll walk you through the, the steps and take care of uh, as much of the work involved in recovering from identity theft. You can actually call your bank and credit card company, alert them of the fraud uh, so that they can close your accounts and and, uh, freeze fraudulent transactions. You can also check your credit reports and see if there's some some fraud on there. And you can respond immediately to any IRS notices and call the numbers that they give you. And also you can visit identitytheft.gov. That's identitytheft.gov for steps that you should take right away to provide Protect yourself and your financial accounts. Well, I wish I would have known some of that before I got into my mess. Here's what happened to me. Then I had to get a uh, a pin once I had established I was who I was. The IRS gave me a pin, and now that pin is part of my annual uh, filing for my taxes. What documents should we hold on to in the case of uh, being a victim of identity theft? Yes, if you file a, a report with the police, you should keep that. You should also... Uh, Keep evidence of anything that looks fraudulent. If they signed anything, if you have evidence of that, you should also keep your own uh, personal um, records that you have. And all those things will help you in in that situation. Yeah. Uh, It's important for everybody to know, too, that CPAs use income tax software that encrypts all of your personal information, and they will never request that you sign a blank return or an e-file form. It really is one more layer of protection for you, and, you know, you're going to get the best information possible. So go to uacpa.org to find a CPA that's right for you. I lock up my Old Spice Fiji Aluminum Free Dry Spray to keep that 24-7 lasting freshness safe for myself. Fresh coconuts, palm trees in the wind. 
It's like catching waves in Fiji. Actually, I just talked myself into a refreshing spritz of Fiji. My old spice is missing! No! <laughs> For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger. Offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. KSL News Time 845. The three things you need to know this hour. First, the Supreme Court says Colorado elections officials cannot keep former President Trump off the ballot. I'm KSL News Radio's Randall Jepson. Second, two people are dead following a workplace shooting in Salt Lake City over the weekend. Third, a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. Still have delays in spots because of the Snow Mountain View corridor between West Jordan and Kearns and uh, West Valley. Plus I-15 now slowing in Midvale. Going into the canyons, traffic starting to get iffy in Parleys and big in Little Cottonwood Canyons. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. 38 with a chance for snow showers today, then drier and warmer tomorrow. I'm Matt Johnson. And right now in Salt Lake City, 29 degrees with our top national stories. This is a special report from ABC News. Trump stays on the ballot. I'm Sherry Preston. The U.S. Supreme Court ruling this morning that Donald Trump's name should remain on Colorado's state ballot despite his participation on January 6th. ABC News national correspondent Stephen Portnoy reports from Washington. It's the unanimous opinion of the high court overturning the Colorado ruling. All nine justices say they agree. It's not for individual states to decide when the 14th Amendment applies to federal candidates and federal office holders. The court says the terms of the amendment speak only to enforcement by Congress. This ruling ends the debate, and it means that despite the findings of judges or officials in Colorado, Maine, and most recently Illinois, that he engaged in insurrection, Donald Trump will remain on the ballot. Colorado's attorney general issuing a statement minutes ago saying in accordance with this decision, Trump is an eligible candidate. The ruling comes one day ahead of Super Tuesday when 15 states, including Colorado, go to the polls. This is ABC News. Your voice, your vote, 2024. Special coverage on KSL News Radio. All right, let's go in depth on this. A little deeper dive, that rare 9 0 opinion from the U.S. Supreme Court. Although, Boyd Matheson, you've told me it's not that rare. It's just that the narrower opinions tend to get all of the, uh, suck up all the oxygen in the room, so to speak. Yeah, that's right. The, the most common uh, is 908172. That's how most cases at the Supreme Court are actually decided. So not totally surprising on this one. I think it is interesting, one, how quickly they moved through this process uh, for the Supreme Court. That's usually a very lengthy thing. So they clearly were united in all of this. But I want to read you something from Justice Amy Coney Barrett in her concurring opinion to this ruling. Uh, I actually got this from our friend uh, former justice from the D.C. Circuit, Thomas Griffith, texted this uh, to me this morning. Uh, so this is Amy Coney Barrett. She said, in my judgment, this is not the time to amplify disagreement with stridency. The court has settled a politically charged issue in the volatile season of a presidential election. Particularly in this circumstances, writings on the court should turn the na national temperature down, not up. For present purposes, our differences are far less important than our unanimity. All nine justices agree on the outcome of this case. That is the message Americans should take home. Sounds like she's been listening to the Boyd Matheson <laughs> program every afternoon. Uh, I did notice right after this uh, announcement was made that even our governor, Spencer Cox, got on uh, X and he said this was an easy call and I'm glad it was unanimous. Yeah, and I think that was the most important thing, that unanimity was so important on this one. And I think the justices did the right thing. Uh, and actually really interesting, it was just a little over a week ago that Amy Coney Barrett and the other end of the political spectrum on the court, Justice uh, Sonia Sotomayor, sat down together mm. for a conversation I and, heard that on your and, show, yeah. Yeah, and talked about the unanimity that they actually have as they debate things, as they talk about issues, but they do it in a way that actually gets to what matters most for the nation, not what's expedient politically. Uh, Justice Barrett was talking about turning down the heat uh, yeah. right now. I don't know that that's possible. <laughs> what they did do is they stayed out of the fray. And I mentioned this a minute yeah. ago uh, with uh, Greg Scordis. They stayed out of the fray of whether Donald Trump was guilty of 
insurrection. Yeah, because that was not was what was in front of them. And that's politically, that's what everybody wants is, are you on this side or are you on that side? Are you for or against? Do you like this or you hate that? Uh, and the court showed something that's important for all of us. What is the principle at stake? What is the policy and what does it mean to the American people? And it's not their job right now to be dealing with all of the other facts and all of those other cases. This was strictly who gets to decide who is on the ballot. And so now all of those other cases all across the country are moot, uh, null and void. This is the law of the land. And so now everyone can move forward in terms of what's the right process that we talked about earlier today. And then how do we get to a better solution for the American people? And hopefully that will give us all just a little pause here, a little exhale exhale to put at least one thing behind us as we go on into the summer months. All right, uh, Boyd, thank you. Be listening this afternoon every day, actually, 1 to 3 o'clock to Inside Sources with uh, Boyd's knowledge on what goes on back there in Washington. It's 849, time for a look at traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Andy's back in the traffic center and that is very slow going yeah that's out in utah county in springville the snow's just blasting the freeway and so traffic is uh, slowed down uh, to a crawl going uh, from spanish fork really up through springville and then southbound we've got multiple crashes or slide offs or both i don't know traffic having to squeeze by to the middle and this is one where the plows need to come through because uh, you're tracking through snow drifts and that's part of the reason for this delay. Further north, you're actually okay the rest of the way through Utah County into the valley. Heather? Up in Weber and Davis County, we do have a bit of delay northbound US 89 trying to get to I-84. We have had snow in that area and some accidents as well. Uh, right now, it just looks like it's a lot of congestion and wet roads. You also have a bit of congestion on 5600 South and Roy. That is all eastbound heading toward I-15. But I-15, mostly at speed heading south into Salt Lake until you get to the north interchange in North Salt Lake. That's where you'll hit the brakes. Eric. In uh, Salt Lake County, we do have northbound, southbound slowing now on I-15 from Midvale up to 53rd South and Murray. And likewise, uh, you've got another slow stretch over on Mountain View Corridor from West Jordan up into Kearns. Uh, Once you go past uh, 54th South and then head up into West Valley City, that does start to improve. Out in Tooele County, uh, no slowdowns right now on SR-36, but going into the mountains, I-80 really slow from the East Canyon exit all the way out to the Kimball Junction exit. Uh, Got snow on the roads and major slowing in both directions on the freeway. For a limited time, open a 12-month certificate from Cypress Credit Union and get 5.25% APY. Learn more at any branch or visit cypresscu.com. Eric Butler on the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7-day forecast on the chilly side today. 38 degrees with a chance for snow showers. 46 tomorrow, partly cloudy. We'll then go 51 on Wednesday, yes, warmer, but a chance for some rain, snow, showers. 46, mostly cloudy for Thursday. Friday, 41, partly cloudy, up to the upper 40s and low 50s for both Saturday and Sunday with some sunshine and clouds. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now in Salt Lake City, light snow falling again and uh, 29 degrees. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Just want to remind everybody, since uh, Boyd was just in here, that coming up on Inside Sources today and tomorrow, he's going to be dedicating... Probably more than just this segment, but for sure at 1.30, both days, he'll be focusing on Super Tuesday, and then he'll be a part of uh, our team coverage on uh, the, the uh, Super Tuesday Eve to, uh, evening tomorrow night. Look forward to that here. The best coverage of Super Tuesday coming on KSL News Radio, where the news time is 8.52. Good morning. I'm the 40% off window company. 40% off? Of what? Hey, 40% off. Yeah, I'll bet it's your biggest sale of the year. This week only, because you need a model home in our neighborhood. Well... Well, nothing. It's baloney. Hi, this is Kathy. And Doug of Window World. When you hear those things, you know you've entered the baloney zone. Resist the force of the baloney zone. Find Window World online at windowworldutah.com. Or call Window World at 281-8111. That's 281-8111. And that's no baloney. Imagine your team always looking and feeling their best in high-performance technical workwear. Cintas can make it happen. They have garments for almost every job imaginable. And with the Cintas workwear program, you get freshly laundered garments delivered every week for everyone on your team. Great garments without the bother of laundry. That's a real perk for employees. Find out how Cintas can boost team image and morale. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. 
Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Dave and Eugenific. 45 days and it's over. Lawmakers passed hundreds of bills. This week, we'll give you the five biggest bills that either passed or failed, starting with the stadiums. Major League Baseball, NHL, NBA. I'll tell you which one I think is inevitable today on Dave and Dujanovic. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Chicago and Houston being called the most financially distressed cities in the U.S. A Wallet Hub analysis looked at the number of bankruptcy filings, credit scores, and accounts in forbearance, determining that those two cities have the most people worried about money. Real estate developers are seeing and noticing a a new subset within both millennials and empty nesters. They're called forever renters. They are folks who are choosing to rent rather than buy because they can't find the right kind of small home. They're favoring bigger and newer apartments. And the European Union is fining Apple nearly $2 billion for unfairly favoring its own music streaming service over rivals. The EU claims that Apple broke the law by restricting developers from informing consumers about uh, alternative, cheaper music services available. It's the third biggest antitrust fine the U.S. or U- EU rather has ever commissioned. All right, your money at this moment. The market slowly uh, scratching back some of the earlier losses. We were down a half a percentage point on the Dow, now down just, uh, well, less than three-tenths with a loss of 101 points. The S&P is down just a fraction. It's off two, and the NASDAQ is down 15. If you're keeping an eye on gold, by the way, it's uh, up about $15.40 an ounce right now. Big swath of I-15 delays northbound and southbound between Spanish Fork and Provo thanks to a lot of snow on the roads. We'll check traffic and weather together again coming up in just a minute. This hour of Utah's Morning News brought to you by the UACPA, reminding you that CPAs use income tax software that encrypts personal information, and they will never request that you sign a a blank return or an e-file form. Helping me uh, sort out security for your filing this year is Ron Thurber. He's a CPA and tax manager.